raise the reverb up a little bit. Yo, now that you notice the mic that I'm holding, ain't nobody fucking with me. We take them and break them and God is forsaking them, sending them over to me. You think I'll be kitting your skull, I'll be splitting with what I am spitting for free. It's hip hop appreciation week, now check the way I speak, now listen to me. Africa, that's who we are, steering the car, raising the bar. You gotta know, just who you are, wherever you go, wherever you are. You are the one, you are the star, open your mind, you will go far. Bringing the beast, bringing the rawr. Ripping every heart of every DJ that be selling now. They never play the conscious rap, but culture them be yelling now. The frauds and fakers, cultural traders, yes, we got to get them out. Push your hands up right now if you not the one that's selling out. Knowledge brings the heavens out, ignorance what hell about. KRS the culture, keep a Garvey out forever, shout. But we going deeper now, deeper with the teacher now. Deeper with your speaker, with the woofer and the tweeter now. Deep into Jamaica with the sound. Against the slaver with the rumble of the baser Brings up ancestral behavior Remember what they gave you To defend against the slaver Copper, what a naya, bingy, the drummer and the baser Black people, this was illegal Even the church, they said it was evil Look at they treat you, look at they treat us Never the truth, they only deceive us Time to believe us and perceive us Into the nation that can relieve us And then retrieve us from all the fevers And non-believers, they can just leave us I come to bring your focus back Open your eye, do not let the devil hold you back. Whenever you train, you can get right back on track. Knowledge man is supreme, how dope is that? Yo, now that you know that the mic that I'm holding ain't nobody fucking with me. We take them and break them and call them forsaking them, sending them over to me. You think I be getting your skull, I be splitting with what I'm spitting for free? It's hip hop appreciation week, now check the way I speak, now listen to me. This is the teacher, only a speaker, blow the ether. You know the teacher, lyrical leader. You already know, they already weaker. KRS1, I'm stronger and deeper. Culture keeper, Grim Reaper. One of the reasons why you get confused is because the capitalist system lets you think that you can think about something without being involved in that which you think about. Matter of fact, they let you think you're thinking. <laughs> I see it all the time. You can even look at the television and watch a basketball game. People in the stands will criticize every basketball player. They've never been on the basketball court. Unless you played basketball, you cannot criticize any basketball player. It is clear, unless you're involved in that which you're thinking about, you can't think about it. None of you who have not taken physics cannot think about physics. Of course, you can think you think about it. But the only way you can think about physics is when you're studying physics, involved in physics. The only way you can think about mathematics is when you're involved in it. If you say you are for world peace and you think about world peace, but you do absolutely nothing for world peace, you're not thinking about world peace. You're just thinking you're thinking about world peace. <laughs> so it is with the struggles of our people. I'm sure that if I asked all of you, do you want our people struggle to advance? Every hand must go up. The truth is so powerful that even liars must spit it out. <laughs> of course. Every hand would go up. Oh, everybody wants the people to advance. Everybody wants us to get equality. Everybody wants terrorism to stop against us. Everybody wants racism to stop. Then you ask, how many are involved in the struggle to advance the people's cause? The hands will go down. But those who are not involved in the people's struggle, they feel, still think that they think about the people's struggle. We must stop this for you. You must come to understand that the only way you can think about your people's struggle is when you are involved in your people's struggle. And if you're not involved in your people's struggle, don't fool yourself. Don't let capitalism let you think that you're thinking about your people. <laughs> the capitalist system makes people stupid and then makes them arrogant in their stupidity. <laughs> Not only do they not know, but they do not want to know. I've seen it everywhere. As a matter of fact, they take positions based on total ignorance. I told you I'm anti-capitalist, thus I'm a socialist. The other day while I was just speaking about socialism, my brother said, Oh, Brother Kwame, you still talking about socialism? I said, yes, sir. He said, he said well, you know, uh, I ain't no socialist. I'm a capitalist, you know. America's a capitalist system and it's the greatest country in the world. Well, you know the line, I don't have to tell it to you. And uh, he said he was for capitalism. I asked the brother one simple question. Bro, how much capital you got in the bank? <laughs> Just a simple question. He was unemployed. <laughs> well, you know what Malcolm said. The slave will work harder to put out the master's house when it's on fire than the master himself. They don't even know what capitalism is, they don't know what socialism is, but they take strong positions. Strongly, I'm against socialism. What is it? I'm against it. <laughs> if you say you love your people, then you want to know everything there is to know about your people. 
Do you know that if a little brother on this campus happens to be your boyfriend and he says he likes you, he wants to know everything about you? Who are you going with before me? <laughs> What'd you all do? <laughs> How'd you all do it? <laughs> <laughs> everything. Now, if you say you like a woman and you want to find out everything about one woman and you say you love your people and you don't want to find out anything about your people, you're lying. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the Temple of Hip Hop. I am KRS-One. I'm here with G. Simone, Minister Sun One, Pascal, and we're in a hotel. Obviously, you can see we're on the road again, moving, doing our thing. Uh, it is wonderful to have you here with us today. It is uh, a bright, sunny day. I'm in New York. Uh, I'm in New York um, here, and uh, we're, we're actually gearing up from for a whole lot and recovering from a whole lot. Let me just start off by saying that this is the Temple of Hip Hop. The Temple of Hip Hop is a hip hop ministry, archive, school, and society. Our aim and our mission is to preserve hip hop by preserving hip hoppers. We are not just doing hip hop, we are hip hop. Rap is something we do. Hip hop is something we live. And because we live hip hop, we preserve hip hop by preserving our lives, the lives of the actual hip hoppers themselves. So that's what you're here for. This is the Temple of Hip Hop. We're training teachers how to teach hip hop. You are among the first teachers of hip hop if you're on this particular call. I am KRS One, hip hop's architect, teacher, you know, MC, da 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 da. Uh, and I'm here to, uh, and I'm speaking this way for those, this is, we're getting new audiences in. So, I'm making sure that you get at the top of these readings what these readings are all about. This is for teachers, uh, mostly for teachers and for temple members, those who uh, take hip hop seriously, uh, straight up and down. Uh, this is not an entertainment thing. This is not. Um, this is not an entertainment thing. Uh, this is a serious uh, education on uh, on leadership within our culture. And how do you get to that leadership? Well, you're reading the gospel of hip hop. That's what we're doing. We're reading this, the gospel of hip hop uh, through and through. Uh, we're getting to the end of it. There are some highlights, as you know, and the highlights is what will be tested on at the end of the reading itself, uh, where all of the rest of you in this instance uh, will receive your true hip hop a certification at the end of the reading of the gospel of hip hop. Let me go over just a few um, uh, shout outs real quick before I begin. Yesterday I was in Brooklyn. That's also what brings me to New York. Uh, I'm in Brooklyn and then I'm going to Boston. Brooklyn was crazy uh, yesterday. Uh, shout out to the Bushwick, uh, the Bushwick Collective. That's what we was dealing with. Uh, Bushwick Brooklyn, Bushwick Collective. It was their 11th anniversary of the Bushwick Collective. And it was an eclectic group of people out there. Of course, you know, I brought the thunder and the lightning to them, uh, even though it was sunny. Uh, it was a, a magnificent uh, show. They brought hip hop out uh, to Brooklyn. And surprisingly, there was a spot, the spot we was at. I don't know, uh, those of you that uh, frequent Miami, uh, it, looked like, uh, um, it looked like the area that's called Art Basel where there's mad graffiti on everything. And it's like a section of the town um, designated for hip hop, or, or in this instance, for art, for all art, really. And I mentioned that to remind you of the, of the mission of the Temple of Hip Hop, at least the, the, this first mission of the Temple of Hip Hop, our work, I should say, is to establish hip hop, uh, hip -hop cities all over the world. Um, you know, we're starting in America because that's where we at, but Really, the concept is to start hip hop cities. It doesn't matter where they're at; they'll be all over the world. The concept was um, the concept was to uh, uh, start like a little hip hopia, uh, like the way you have Chinatown, Little Italy, Little Greek. You know, a lot of cities have designated areas uh, for 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 specific cultures, and the whole city gets to come to that area and enjoy the culture. Well, 
we at the Temple of Hip Hop are working toward establishing hip hop areas in certain cities. I've been going around city to city uh, presenting this idea to mayors, to governors, and so on. And it's, it's gotten a great response, but the response is not the work. <laughs> uh, it's the beginning of the work, at least if somebody says, damn, that's a great idea. You know, if a mayor says to you, this is a great idea, we can get this done. At least that's the first step. And that's what we actually have. So I was talking to some people from Virginia. Um, they haven't really moved yet, but we're in discussion. Talking to some people in Newark, you know, we've been in a discussion with Mayor Ross Baraka in his office and so on. They haven't made any moves yet, uh, but still in discussion there as well. Uh, tomorrow, I'm taking a meeting with 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, uh, the building owner, uh, taking a meeting with him. We're going to talk up some things. Uh, those who attended the, the um the, those that attended Hip Hop Appreciation Week, uh, the, about 30 of us that attended Hip Hop Appreciation Week, you remember we was at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the community center uh, where hip hop began. And um, I'm, I'm just doing my follow up work to that as well, taking a meeting with the building owner tomorrow uh, to see what else we can come up with uh, uh, regarding the space. In addition to that, there was Leroy. Uh, many of you might not remember him, but um, Leroy, uh, his last name escapes me, but his name is Leroy, a cool brother. He was, uh, he's the one who, uh, co-authored, uh, SR-335, which was the latest proclamation given to hip hop, uh, by Senator Chuck Schumer. Um, a gentleman, uh, brother named Leroy, uh, was the one who had the ear of Chuck Schumer, Senator Chuck Schumer, and got this legislation uh, into Chuck Schumer's office and they, you know, reworked it and, and, and did their thing. But it was uh, uh, given out last year, August 11th, um, uh, 2021, August 11th, 2021, where um, hip hop was declared, or, or not hip hop, well, well, we reaffirmed hip hop as culture, reaffirmed 1520 as its birthplace uh, and included other um, genres, offshoots of rap music, hip hop spelled in lowercase, uh, offshoots of that was also in the document and so on. And, and it uh, declared uh, Hip Hop Celebration Day uh, and Hip Hop Recognition Month. I get these mixed up, but I, I hope I said it right. Um, and so, so we're coming back around again to August 11th. And of course, the Temple of Hip Hop, the ones who do the work, uh, are questioning um, these uh, officials. The Bronx Borough President is a new Bronx Borough President um, uh, there who is also there with us. When we first put this SR-335 uh, together, uh, we were all there at 1520. So we want to talk to the Bronx Borough President. We want to talk back to Chuck Schumer uh, and his office, the Bronx Borough President, and her office. Um, get Ruben Diaz. I was just with Ruben Diaz last week, uh, well, a week, two, uh, a little more than last week. You saw us at the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Uh, we went there, uh, did that. Um, well, actually, that's that's when I was with Ruben Diaz. It wasn't last week. It was during Hip Hop Appreciation Week. Uh, uh, we 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 were there. But these are the people uh, that that um, we're going to talk to about what is our next move for SR three three five Senate Resolution. Uh, 335. Uh, is it just paper or are we really going to put some action to this? So that's the temple of hip hop. Y'all should just know that uh, real quick in terms of the mission that we're actually pushing forward. We haven't forgotten that we announced August 11th uh, as hip hop recognition uh, or, uh, day. Uh, hip hop. Somebody help me with this. Uh, hip hop recognition day and hip hop celebration month. Or is it Hip Hop Recognition Month and Hip Hop Celebration Day? Uh, somebody's knocking on the door there too. Sorry for the delay. I'm just trying to get some information. Um, hip Hop uh, Recognition Month. Hip Hop Celebration Day. Hip Hop Recognition Month and Hip Hop Celebration Day. We celebrate the day and recognize the month. Okay, thank you for that. Um, 
And so, uh, uh, so, so just know that, okay? Just know that this is the forward movement. This is how we're moving forward. This is what it but is. But it was only also proclaimed for last year. No, that's what we detected. Right, right. Uh, that's right. well. Someone is uh, uh, suggest, no, not even suggest, uh, saying that the see. I'm not getting into the document, <laughs> but the document uh, had errors in it, basically. And one of the errors of that initial document was that it only um, celebrated hip hop, uh, uh, um, hip hop celebration day, and hip hop recognition month was only for that day and that month because it had a year on it that said 2021. And so the idea was, if you know, the year wasn't supposed to be, it was supposed to be in annually and in perpetuity. And I think that's what the intent was. No. No. Listen, Brother Leroy, when we had our dinner, said that, no, you or we had to file different paperwork or extra paperwork in order to make it uh, uh, in perpetuity. In, in perpetuity. Well, it was it, it so so this document that's still being worked on, still being uh touched up even, uh is what we're talking about. So I saw Leroy, the gentleman we're talking about right here. I saw him yesterday. We talked briefly uh at the uh Bushwick Collective. Um I don't know how 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 real this it, it, how real the document really is, and that was the temple of hip hop's look at it, but we're still pushing forward. Um, you called it a recognition day in a month, uh, uh, celebration, you know, you call it, so we're sticking to that and, and we're going to move forward. Uh, I'll keep you updated as to how, um, these government agencies deal with this legislation. I still think it was an error, uh, and, and they, they couldn't, because it was so silly and stupid to have one, we have all these people out there for one day. No, uh, it, it was it was it had to be some kind of a typo, but we will find out. Um, we will find out. So big up to um Bush the Bushwick Collective. It has nothing to do with that, but I saw Leroy at the Bushwick Collective uh, who did the document. We're going to talk further on that. We've been talking on that as well. Uh, so on. You should know also that uh, the celebration day and recognition month, right? that August 11th is Hip Hop Celebration Day and August, uh, uh, the, uh, the month of August is Hip Hop Recognition Month. And you should also know as well that every three months, um, Hip Hop celebrates uh, uh, a, a holy day or a recognition of itself uh, every, it's, well, four times a year. So if you start with Black History Month, uh, uh, you start there, Black History Month, uh, and then you go from there. Uh, if, if you consider Black History Month a, a hip hop holy day, something that hip hop is going to continue, um, you start in February with Black History Month. So you go February, uh, March, April, May is uh, Hip Hop Appreciation Week. June, July, August is Hip Hop uh, Recognition Month and Hip Hop Celebration Day. And then uh, August, September, October, November. November is Hip Hop History Month. And then we swing back around again, November, December, January, February is Black History Month. So you see the clock we're working with, round the clock. Every three months, you're celebrating hip hop in some way, uh, in, in, in that sense. So um, shout out, of course, uh, to Lil Fame, from MOP, these are all the people who were there uh, yesterday in Brooklyn, uh, doing their thing, Bush with Brooklyn. Lil Fame from MOP, shout out to him. Havoc from from uh, Mob Deep was out there doing their thing. Evil D, uh, Beat Miners was was a DJ and doing his thing. So with Static Selector, uh, a DJ as well, uh, doing his thing. Mad Party was crazy. Shout out to Positive K, big up to Craig G. Spliff Star, Stud Doogie, uh, and Terminology. Uh, these were the MCs that were out there spitting the raw, doing their thing. And of course, KRS came on and uh, we shut it completely down. So that was Brooklyn uh, just yesterday. Uh, and it was actually pretty dope. Um, Black Market Expo. That's where I'm going to be next. Uh, it's, it's actually called Black Market. 
I just do the expo on there, but it's it's called Black Market, and um, they're they're celebrating um, Black Music Month as well, um, celebrating Af obviously African American culture in that sense. They have the first female and Black mayor of Boston. Uh, um, uh, uh, the woman's name escapes my name, but uh, get her name for me, please. Um, uh, but the mayor is going to be, in fact, I'm going to meet her. So I, I will find out who this woman is, uh, 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 uh in, when I meet her. Um, but she's, she's supposed to have made history, um, at least in politics, uh, as being the first, uh, woman mayor of Boston, the first female mayor of Boston, a uh, woman of Boston, um, uh, first, and then black woman on top of that, uh, uh, Boston, um, she's going to be there as well. She's claiming hip hop. That's oh, why. Michelle Wu. Michelle Wu. That's what I see popping up. Well, her name is Michelle. That I do know. It is Michelle. So it is Michelle Wu. You know that for sure. I uh, know, I I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know that. I'm trying to find out. Um, uh, look, don't worry about it now. We'll 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 we'll, we'll get to it. But um, since 2021, yes, Michelle Wu. Oh, she's she's a she's Asian. An Asian yeah, woman. Well, she's they're, they're saying a black woman. She's claiming black woman. Really? Hold up, let me see. Kim, Kim Jamie. Yeah. Listen, we're, 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 ah! we're I'm gonna I'm a holler at Simone. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, holler at Simone. She'll know. Um, but this, um, maybe that was the previous man. It could have been. Could could have been the previous man. Uh, because Asians are claiming black culture now too. You know. Listen. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, but I'm going to be in Boston. That's the point. Uh, I'm going to be in Boston and uh, we're doing this black market three day symposium there, uh, talking about African American culture and so on. But the, the, the gist of it is hip hop. Uh, and obviously that's why I'm being brought forward. Uh, we're going to discuss hip hop politics. The mayor's there. We're going to be talking about these hip hop cities. Does Boston want to create a little hip hop or somewhere there in Boston um, with a temple of hip hop in the center of that place? Uh, these are the things we'll be bringing up and talking. It's, it's, it's a symposium, two days of talk, and then the concert on the third day, Sunday. So um, that's really it for the announcements. Um, that's really it. Uh, we're going to get into this read now. Uh, pull your gospel out. Pull your gospel out. We are at the 13th overstanding. We're at the 13th overstanding, and it's called the Hip Hop Activists. And one of the reasons we played you Kwame Torre at the beginning was because um, not only is this one of my teachers as well, uh, but uh, we mention, we quote him and this thought about if you're not thinking about, like, you cannot be involved in, in, you cannot be thinking about something unless you're involved in it. This is the theme, uh, the overall thing that I want to just shed with you, pour on to you right now as we deal with this particular reading. You know, you may say hip hop culture uh, all day, uh, but unless you are actually engaged in the building and developing of hip hop as culture, as a civilization, as a place, as a nation, unless you're seriously engaged in that work every day, you're not really thinking about it. You think you're thinking about it, but you're not really thinking about it. Now, that's not to say uh, that you can't think about something sincerely, come up with an idea think about something sincerely, and then apply the idea. But you know eventually you're going to have to apply the idea in order for that idea to be real. So there is a place for thinking. There is a place to think your ideas through. 
and say, you know, I, I do feel that hip hop is my culture. I do say that. I think that. Uh, that, that that is on my mind. But as we go through our learning now of, of what it means to be hip hop and what it means to be a hip hop teacher, we're going deeper now into the idea that just because you're thinking about something does not mean that you're really thinking about it because you're not engaged in it. You're not, you're not being challenged by whatever you're thinking about. You, it's just in your head. So, or, or whatever you think at. <laughs> Some people think what they got in other places, but uh, wherever you think at. So, so again, the activity, the engagement in whatever you're thinking about is the actual creation and development of the thought. You're really thinking about something when you're engaged in it. At least that's the beginning of what we're going to talk about here today. So turn your gospel now to page 530. Excuse me, it is Michelle Wolf. It is Michelle Wolf. Yeah. Well, she might be there claiming hip hop. Yes, I, be I believe it. She, 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 she with the last name Wolf. Wu Tang, <laughs> Michelle Wu Tang. <laughs> hip hop is the greatest culture ever. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll verify that and, and see what's up. But she's coming to explain how. Uh, hip hop put her in office, and uh, she's going to quote my, my work uh, uh, as and others. NLG and the Bulldogs is there, uh, and the whole symposium is based around me, basically, uh, which is why I'm being called up there. So, big up to Michelle Wu. So this is how we doing it uh, up in Boston. So let me get back to the lesson. Oh, and by the way, right, is 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 the the name of the three day symposium is health, wealth, and knowledge of self, which was the, a song I did, I uh, uh, forgot what album this was, but it was, a, it went, me not gonna need nothing else, but health, wealth, and knowledge of myself. Uh, uh. We not gonna need nothing else, but health, wealth, and knowledge of myself. And then I went down a list, a five thing list, of how you maintain longevity. Well, according to this mayor, that's the list she followed. It's on KRS-One. Huh? It's on your album, KRS-One. It's on my album, KRS-One. It's on the KRS-One album, 1995. She said that list is what got her through. And so there's a whole symposium going on in Boston now uh, for me up there to teach these lessons to the Boston community. And I'm flanked with Ed O.G. and the Bulldogs and other activists. Shout out to Marlo too up there, uh, Inebriated Beats. We did an album called Keep Right up in Boston, had the whole Boston, <laughs> we had the dudes on their knees. Uh, shout out to the Middle East in Boston as well. A long time club, I've been coming there as well. In fact, my last show there, the chief of police did Sound of the Police with me on stage. Um, Boston's a mad, crazy place. Uh, it's really officially where America got started, actually, uh, if you really think about it. Um, okay, so enough of that. Uh, we'll get back to it. I have some paperwork in my um, in my uh, my room, which may uh, clarify some some more. Yeah, no, no, Simone, Simone sent me something, but this uh, I gotta look at this Kim Janey. Oh, Kim Janey now. It says, uh, says New York Times, she experienced busing in Boston. Now she's the city's first black mayor. Right. So, uh, and what was her name? Kim Janey. Kim Janey. But on the paperwork of, of Black Market, it says special guest, city of Boston Mayor Michelle Wu. So maybe she's not the mayor anymore. Yes, this oh, oh, oh Lord, right, 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 right. Okay, now see, reading is fundamental. <laughs> Research is fundamental. <laughs> okay, so yes, so Michelle Wu will be there. She's going to be a special guest, and then on day two, Mayor Kim M. Jane, the first black female mayor of Boston. 
So Michelle She's Wu, not the first black mayor of Boston. Yes, she is. Oh. Or, or before Michelle oh. Wu, every mayor of Boston was white. Wow. And, and men. <laughs> so she became the first female. I did I did see that. Okay. okay. Michelle Wu became the first female and Asian. Uh, oh, so uh, she's first female Asian. Yes. In Asian. Boston. That's Michelle Wu. Right. And now there's Kim M. Janey, who's the first black. Kim M. Janey is now first black woman. So she's not the first woman. No. No. Michelle, Michelle Wu. Michelle Wu is. Right. But she's the first black woman right. to, to be there uh, as the artist. I hope y'all getting all of this. Uh, this is not the lessons we're teaching today. But this is a part of our shout outs and trying to get our own act together here with who we're going to meet up in these places uh, and so on. But um, that, that's that's what it is. So let me get back to this. So, so we're talking about, uh, we played Kwame Torre at the beginning because we're talking about activism being the real uh, hands on when it comes to thinking about something. You can't actually think about something that you're not fully engaged in. And we're applying that to hip hop as culture. That, of course, you know, you can think about hip hop as culture all day, and we all do. Uh, but as teachers uh, of hip hop, as members of the Temple of Hip Hop, we're going a little deeper and we're saying, you know, let's look at this philosophically. Let's look at this from a principal point of view. No, if you're not actually involved in the development and building of your culture, you're not actually thinking about it. You think you're thinking about it, but you're not really thinking about it because you're not being challenged. You're not being engaged. You're not having to come up with ways to deal with what you're thinking about. Um, the 13th overstanding hip hop activists. We're talking about activism now. This is the character of the activist. This is what gets you through, okay? Being an activist. This is what got me through. Uh, my early days was all about activism. I mean, today, of course, I'm still activist in that sense. But no, when I was in my 20s and 30s, it was on the picket line. It was in the marches. It was stand up and, and you know, this kind of thing. We went to the White House and picket in front of the White House lawn. I'm there with President Aristide on another, another mission with Haiti when he was ousted, uh, you know, you know, activism. We're fighting for causes. We're we're, we're looking um, for justice. Uh, the character that gets you through that is what we're discussing right now. Turn your gospel to 530. We're going to start reading from paragraph one. After 1994, I attended many more hip hop summits. Now stop here for a minute. What we're doing is we're reading the, the previous chapter uh, uh, was the movement. And you remember, we got through the movement. We talked about how we met for the first time in hip hop to discuss hip hop as culture. All of us sat down and met uh, discussing hip hop as culture. Now, this overstanding is directly after that because right after we all discussed what we wanted, and we're gonna reiterate that too. After we all discussed what we wanted, I went out and did the work, straight up and down. I went out and did the work. Now, this is not no brag. You know I ain't here doing that mission. But it's important for you to know for the protection of hip hop, for the protection of our culture, that nobody else could say they did this. Nobody else could take credit. No, our temple of hip hop did this. And so after the meetings, after we had the meetings, we went and did the work. We went and collected the notes. We went and put everything together. And this is what's going to get us to the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace years later. So after 1994, after we had that meeting, uh, actually in 1994, after the 1994 meeting of the minds, okay, after 1994, I attended many more hip hop summits, conferences, and meetings where we all declared our loyalty to hip hop's preservation, but then got sidetracked and even stifled once we returned to the pressures and responsibilities of daily life. This is what stopped everybody. This was shuffled everybody around. While these famous summits, conferences, and meetings took place, 
during the 1990s, it was KRS-One who, who was expected to attend and take, take notes and then advise the hip hop community on a plan of action relevant to its survival and growth. That's when we left the meeting. Those of us who um, will come to the temple of hip hop and look at the full meeting of the minds take. Remember this, what we have in the gospel is the meat of it, is the meat of the meeting. Uh, but the whole tape is about four hours long, almost five hours the meeting was. And and you'll notice it, when you see the whole tape, you'll go back and uh, and it's tape too, by the way. It's a VHS tape. <laughs> but when you go back and watch the, the 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 presentation, you'll see that I stand up and start talking about not only what what's documented about a book, but I go further and the congregation gives it up. Everybody there says, okay, well, KRS is going to go back, write this up, report back to all of us. And that's what I did too. I went back, I wrote up all the, the what is called the minutes of the meeting, uh, went back, put that together, sent it out to everybody, and then went on to have other meetings with others who weren't there, who, who didn't attend but we needed their information. So we kept gathering this. This is what this is. So let's, let's, let's keep going. While these famous summits, conferences, and meetings took place during the 1990s, it was KRS who was expected to attend and take notes and then advise the hip hop community on a plan of action relevant to its survival and growth. And I have not forgotten my commitment. Such was my honor in the 1990s and it remains the same today and it does. We still doing this work right now, <laughs> right now. As I have observed on several occasions, the most pressing issue expressed at many of our meetings and summits over the years have been the need to, and, and, and um, uh, we're gonna highlight three and four. I'm sorry, let's, let's, do, um, let's do three, four, and five. Let's highlight. I'm going to show you why right now. Three, four, and five. Highlight three, four, and five, because this breaks down the movement now. And this is the summary of, 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 of not only the previous chapter on the movement, uh, but also some of the other meetings that we took as, as well. Here's the summary of it. Here's the minutes uh the 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 essence of what we was discussing third paragraph here you go as i have observed on several occasions the most pressing issues expressed at many of our meetings and summits over the years have been the need to restore our ancient ways of life before the invasion of western civilizations upon our tribes and natural resources one put a one by that it says here, summits over the years have been the need, right where it says the need, put a one there, the need to restore our ancient ways of life before the invasions of Western civilizations upon our tribes and natural resources. Two, put a two next to where it says to raise to raise our present quality of life as hip hoppers and to preserve and document the original cultural elements, traditions, histories, and culture uh, and customs of hip hop. Got that? That's number two. To raise that quality of life. And as a matter of fact, what I'm gonna do is break down two and into three. So to raise our present quality of life as hip hoppers is three. No. I'm sorry, it's two. It's two. It's two. Three is this next one above to preserve. To preserve and document the original cultural elements, traditions, history, and customs of hip hop. We're doing that work right now. That's the whole point. And for those of you that was at uh, 1520 Sedgwick Avenue during Hip Hop Appreciation Week, you did that literally. You, you literally did that. 
Here's coming up on others, four and five now. Of course, and now put after of course, four. Freedom from the corporate exploitation of our artistic elements. Now five. The establishment, this is five. The establishment of a code of conduct designed for the peace and prosperity of individual hip hoppers were among were also among the most passionate themes brought up at our historic discussions. Now, these are these five, okay? I just want to point out these five right here. This was the point. This was this was what we wanted. And let me just hit you with it one more time. The need to restore our ancient ways of life before the invasion of Western civilizations upon our tribes and natural resources. That was a point expressed all across from East Coast to West Coast. Random people in the meetings, in the summits, when it was time for questions and answers. And then, of course, the artists and the specialists and the activists of that time in that community, in those communities. We're talking about Chicago, Miami, L.A., Oakland, San Francisco, of course, New York, Philly. Um, uh, we're talking about all of that. Okay. And then, of course, if you're talking about New York, you're talking about Connecticut uh, and uh, Jersey as well. And, and Philly is, again, as well. All of this. Uh, Boston. We did Boston College, which was the first time Hurt expressed his story in a collegiate uh, of, uh, environment. Of prof his, this was his story. And so we've been doing this work, and 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 this is and this is what the point is. So one was to restore our life and lifestyle before colonialism. That's what hip hop is supposed to be doing. Two, to raise our present quality of life as hip hoppers, raise our quality of life. We want to live better as hip hoppers. Three to preserve and document the original cultural elements, traditions, history, and customs of hip hop. That's what we doing. Docu That's really what the exhibits and the archives and these museums being built is really all about. It's the fulfillment of this. I mean, regardless, you know, whether we agree with some of these museums and how they doing things, um, uh, you know, regardless of that, um, uh, the fulfillment, the, the museum being built itself, is the fulfillment of this third part right here to preserve and document the original cultural elements, traditions, history, and customs of hip hop. That should be the Universal Hip Hop Museum, really. But it is the temple of hip hop at 1520. Of course, freedom from corporate exploitation. Uh, of, of course, freedom from corporate exploitation. Of course, freedom from the corporate exploitation of our artistic elements. That we, we, that's what we're working toward, as well as the establishment of a code of conduct designed for peace, for the peace and prosperity of individual hip hoppers were among the most passionate themes brought up at our historic discussions. You'll be tested on that as well. That's why I'm spending time. Together as a multicultural people, the restoration of our lost civilizations, this is a recap, the, the uh, uh, enhancement of our present quality of life, the proper documentation and preservation of our artistic elements in history, freedom from negative corporate exploitation, and a hip hop way of life that promotes peace and prosperity has always been the concerns of the conscious hip hop uh, movement. Know that, know that, and be able to articulate that quickly. When someone asks you, what is this about? Well, it's about this. These have always been the collective agendas that have formed our governing principles and our cultural movement as hip hoppers. Basically, we are seeking freedom and justice for all. And it is the realization of this goal that we, the temple of hip hop, are committed to. Yes, there may be other more pressing concerns to address regarding hip hop. However, over the past 14 years, this is what we have said amongst ourselves at our historic meetings to be one of the most pressing of our concerns as a community, freedom and justice for all. That's what Black Lives Matter is about. That's what all of these movements are about, freedom and justice for all. However, 
I have seen too many sincere and conscious hip hop activists and artists struggle to, e to even struggle and even fail to achieve their goals because of the enormous distractions and temptations of the material world. Some activists spend too much time criticizing the work of other activists, thus stagnating the collective political and social, and social aspirations of our group. Many of our wisest leaders, artists, and advisors are hampered down in life, working to pay rent, mortgages, college loans, business loans, childcare, cell phone bills, car payments, food, gas, clothing, etc. And no one, no one seems to ever have enough money to do what they need to do, even the so-called rich. Sure, we may get up in front of a podium or radio and express the most logical ideas regarding hip hop's preservation and development. But if after such advice is given, there is no one capable of carrying out such lofty ideas because of poverty and or a personal lack of character, as well as vision, emotional sensitivity and or organization, then it is as if such speakers were simply talking to themselves. Do you get this? Let me hit you with it again. Sure, we may get up in front of a podium or radio and express the most logical ideas regarding hip hop's preservation and development. But if after such advice is given, there is no one capable of carrying out such lofty ideas because of poverty and or a personal lack of character, vision, emotional sensitivity, and or organization. All of this is stagnating people, okay? And we're stagnating hip hop. Then it is as if such speakers were simply talking to themselves. No organization, no, no emotional sensitivity to your other brother, to what they may be feeling and what they may be going through. No sense of vision personal lack of character. This is what we were up against when we first started talking about hip hop as culture. We was up against this. It wasn't so much people saying, oh, I don't believe hip hop is culture. You can't be no culture. You can't. It wasn't just that. It was also that we lacked the character to be one. And the temple of hip hop had to go to work on hip hop's cultural character. And the way we went to work on hip hop's cultural character was by first through our through our ability to rap and rhyme and put out videos and this kind of thing. We 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 maintained a certain character, but in our personal lives, we also maintained a certain character. And although people didn't see it, and some did, some didn't, but they always say, you know, don't do things uh, privately even that you wouldn't do publicly. Like even that, you know, because especially when you're a public figure, someone like myself, you're popular, people know you, you know, you, you are handicapped. Uh, you are handicapped. It is a handicap. I can't just walk into supermarkets and enjoy myself picking out avocados. Uh, I have to send my kids in <laughs> uh, to do that. Um, uh, and, and so on. Maybe the apprentice that are around, those of you who might tour with us, uh, you'll know you'll be running around. <laughs> for the teacher. And you'll notice that when I just say, ah, fuck it, let me just go in here. It's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. Uh, we're walking in and people are freaking out. Okay. And you got to deal with that too. Um, you know, so that's just on the touring side. But I mentioned this uh, uh, to say that, you know, uh, uh, well, well, first of all, uh, uh, let, let me remind you of, wait a minute, hold on, I'm getting off my point here. Oh, right. Lack of character. That, that, that it's not so much to just preach and teach this. Your personal character, when people, when you show up to places, your personal character has to, has to be the character that you're teaching. Because you're not just teaching with your mouth. You're teaching with your actual being. So you got to be mindful of, of your personal character, you know, and you would think that this is something that is uh, obvious, uh, but it's not, but it's not, you know, people think that they can say to others, we need unity. I was saying that we need peace, love, unity, and having fun. Then you look at them themselves. You look at them in their life. No peace, no love. No unity and no joy. 
They're stressing, telling you every five minutes is a problem. No love. This one. Did you see so and so up the block, man? Fuck yeah, man, man. No, no love in your talk. No unity. It's about me. I got to do. I got to get me. But yet we preach peace, love, unity. Same, same thing with hip hop as culture. Hip hop is my culture. What are you doing for the culture then every day? Not doing for yourself in the culture, but what are you doing for the culture every day? How are you the culture? How? When we get past the talk, when we get past the rhetoric, how are you actually the culture? That's what we're speaking to here. And what I'm pointing out here is that your character is just as important as your teaching. Matter of fact, your character may be more important than your teaching. Your sense of vision, your emotional sensitivity. You just don't blurt out just, you know, just blurt out any old thing because it's the truth. <laughs> you know, you just don't blurt it out. You got to know the other person. And you got to, you know, season it. You got to know how to talk and get your point across without offense, without deliberate offense or without deliberate shock. You know, you can shock people like, why no? Send them into depression because you want to talk the truth. You want to tell them the truth. No, you got to have some sensitivity about the truth. You got to have a sense of vision. Why are you even saying that? And then you yourself got to be organized. Uh, and of course, it is then as if such speakers are simply talking, right, if you don't have this, like if we could speak this and there's nobody who can do any of this, then it's like we're talking to ourselves. That's the That was the end point of that. Reading on, y'all. The audience of eager revolutionaries cannot act upon what, is, what was being suggested because the very character of the audience and the beliefs that such an audience may, may hold make it difficult, even impossible, for them to even see and then actualize such revolutionary ideas like hip hop is a culture. <laughs> this is why true activism requires teaching as well as preaching. The biggest challenge to the activist is the very people who are to benefit from the activist ideas and actions. If the community desires freedom, then the activist must spend some time teaching the principles of freedom to her people. Otherwise, the community will not know when they have achieved their goal. In most cases, will in most cases will actually fight against the very goal they've set for themselves. In my observation, it will take a community of educated, organized free thinking and prosperous hip hoppers to achieve hip hop's real and actual preservation. Even beyond money, the hip hop community must know peace. Do you, do you understand that? It don't matter whether I have peace or not. The, is our community at peace? It don't matter if you don't have peace or not, or I don't have peace or not. It does the community have peace. In my observation, it will take a community of educated, organized, free thinking, and prosperous hip hoppers to achieve hip hop's real and actual preservation. Even beyond money, the hip hop community must know peace. We must be content and confident in the reality of who we are as a people. Revolutionary talk is always stimulating to hear. But if the people hearing such talk are not at peace first, Amongst themselves, such desperateness caused by insecurity and doubt will collapse and betray our movement even before it can eat. Uh, <laughs> collapse our movement before it can really even start. Now, mind you, I'm writing this right after the meeting of the minds. This is somewhere now where we're about 99, 98, even. Uh, close to 2000 uh, while this is while this is going down. I've already had summits. I've already had meetings. Uh, I've already had uh, this kind of thing. We're coming now into the, 
the new millennium when this is being written. And the experience that I'm having at this time is that dudes is just too ignorant. And, and I say that respectfully. This is not, oh, you just ignorant. You don't, you know, you being stupid. No, it wasn't about that. It was about when you have a new idea, especially one about turning a music genre into a culture. This requires a certain degree of mental maturity. It don't matter whether you the dopest MC. It don't matter whether you the fly DJ or you, you the premier B-boy or B-girl. It don't matter. What matters is, are you, uh, are you a statesman, a stateswoman? Do you have a political science mind? Are you an organizer? Are you a mobilizer? Are you a person who can put your self-interest aside and work for the good of all? Everybody's not that. And, and I say that respectfully because when this was going down, I learned the hard way. Everybody ain't that. I'm walking around thinking, yeah, everybody revolutionary. We was all at the meeting, weren't we? I heard you say it. I heard you say it. But then when it was time to do the work, it wasn't that dudes were not sincere anymore. It was that they had to go back to their job. And look what I said. When it was time to do the work, they had to go back to a job. So only free people were even able to pursue this, even continue this work. Everybody else, and not just job, family. Family will do it before the job got to take care of my kids, got to stay home. And I'm talking about recording artists, major recording artists who got to find ways for their kids, got to find taking care of a, an ailing parent or a friend. You know, you got other responsibilities. You can't spend your whole time on this. But some of us can. Some of us have been ordained to do this. One of which is right here on your screen right now. I got all day with this, <laughs> all day. That's what I think about hip hop. All day, every day, every hour of the day. This is all I think about is right here. And I dream about hip hop. I dream. My, I speak hip, dream, eat, sleep. But, but mind you, now I'm saying that in that way, but overstand the, the split here, okay? Just because you can't do that doesn't mean you're not hip hop. <clears throat> it just means it hampers on the work. And this is what happened to a lot of hip hoppers. People who were at the meeting and was sincere. And that's why the work was dumped on to me. And that's the word, dumped on. Okay, that's the work. A lot of these brothers would have definitely liked to have uh, continued to work, but they needed a grant. They they needed some kind of backing. Some Somebody had the back, even Harry Allen, in the meeting we was having, had said, I got a grant to do Rhythm Cultural Institute, okay? KRS ain't getting no grants and all of that. My mouth's too big, okay? I'm, I'm too outspoken, so I'm not getting grants from corporations and this, that, and the other. I'm going to say something wild, and they're not going to agree with it. You know, this is what it is, so I don't get grants. But God already told me, and, and that could change too. That, that could change too. You know, in my older years and stuff, you know, I could tamper it, uh, cool off a little bit uh, and uh, and go ahead and accept the grant from the Ford Foundation. Uh, <laughs> I can feel y'all out there cringing like, oh God, no. <laughs> Take a Microsoft grant uh, real quick. Uh, but we have been already taught another plan. God already told us. I gave you breaking and seeing graffiti on DJ and beatboxing, street fashion, street language, street knowledge, and street entrepreneurialism. If you can't find no money in that, get the hell out of here. You're not part of this, okay? God already told us that. Master your skill and you don't need a grant. You don't need a loan. You don't need none of that. Master your skills. That's what we did. We mastered the nine elements of hip hop, not just MCing. We did that. We had to get into that b-boying too. We had to get into that graph too. We had to get, be DJs as well. And by living the culture, I wasn't. I didn't need a grant. 
So the temple of hip hop remains independent. Some of y'all was even asking during Hip Hop Appreciation Week if, if you could start not for profits. And I was saying, of course you can, uh, you know, after we get through with the read and you understand what we all are about and when you get your certification, sure you could go ahead and uh, 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 apply for grants and apply for loans and start your own not for profits and this kind of thing, uh, so on. But the temple of hip hop is sovereign. And so we, we're not asking another government to tell us that we're a nation or a culture. We want you. We want that recognition, like all nations are recognized by all nations, favored nations kind of deal. You know, all nations are recognizing each nation, okay? We doing our thing. But that's about as far as it goes. We, we don't need you to tell us we hip hop. We don't need you to tell us your 501c3 codes on our organizations. We don't need that, uh, not at all. And, and, and we don't, I don't say that arrogantly. We just don't. Hip hop is self-contained. We're a billion dollar culture and I'm damn sure coughing off my piece. <laughs> you can believe that. So a billion dollar culture, we don't need no money from nobody. And I always say that in, in, in that sense. We use our skill, we use our skill. And at the Temple of Hip Hop, our membership takes care of us. Our membership takes care of the temple and the temple's needs uh, and so on. So these guys got hampered down back in the days because they had to go do jobs. They had to feed family. They had to pay rent. They had to do this. KRS-One was free, free. And so I was able to write and talk and go do interviews and film and do all this type of stuff because I eat, sleep, and breathe. That This is it for me. This is it, okay? Hip. Ha, that's it, okay? So I went all in on it. And so and so this is some of what we were learning. Why can't the movement go forward? Because dude got to go home to his moms. But dude is 35. He still got to take care of his mom. Word. There it is. So you don't have the time to play with this. You don't have the time to go through this. So KRS-One rises as the one out of necessity. That's all. Not that I'm greater than any of, of the other members who were in these meetings and giving ideas and saying this is what it is, but they gave me the ideas in hopes that I would get these ideas organized into a book and teaching it to you that we doing it, how we doing it right now. This was the, this is what we wanted to do. That's even why I'm doing it. Because this is the intent of the culture from way back, from way back. This is what we wanted. Uh, we're gonna highlight, you to do the work. I'm sorry. I didn't say. Right, right. That's the that's the deeper part of the culture. Give it to Chris. Let him do the work. Right. Um, fifteen and uh, sixteen. Let's highlight fifteen and sixteen. And I'll show you why. I'll read you through. In my observation, hip hop's preservation begins with peace and prosperity, leading to hip hop's independence. Did you get that? I'll say it again. In my observation, and then this is the words I'm using. Notice the words I keep saying in my observation. I'm looking at this. This is this is the, the record of what I'm seeing in our culture. In my observation, hip hop's preservation begins with peace and prosperity leading to hip hop's independence. Why do you want peace and prosperity to be independent? Hip hop must become self-sufficient, self-sustaining, and self-directed. And let me just stop here because Pascal, me and you was talking about this with Kaz. Um, and, and you had uh, documented, just before, at 1520, actually at the 1600 park on Central Capital, me and Kaz sat down quickly just to get our notes and stuff together before we walked into 1520. And Kaz said to me right then and there, because he realized himself, this is another epiphany that Kaz was going through on, in his own inner self. And so he's just saying, no, I realize who I am now. I realize who I am now. And imagine this, it's 2022. Kaz know who he is, but there's another thing that comes over you when you realize, wait, I don't need to go to a museum. I am the museum. I need to organize myself in such a way 
that I tell my story. And one thing I pointed out, Pascal, um, um, Kaz was pointing to me, and he was talking about how he was inspired by my life. I'm calling him my teacher, which he is, but he obviously is inspired by my life, really, which, again, is not a lesson to be told to him. I'm not telling him nothing. My life is what he was inspired by. And he turned around and said, I want, uh, what did he say? Um, he said, I want to get to the level you at. He said, you don't ask nobody for nothing. You ain't on these TVs. You ain't on, but you got everything. You doing it. And he was just talking, we had just released Raw Hip Hop. I think we had just released Raw Hip Hop, uh, you know, a week before that, uh, before Hip Hop Appreciation. He was like, yo, this is, this, is, this is where I need to be. And he said, you always knew. And he said, I'm coming into mine right now. And this is the point, and I think about that because over here, when he says hip hop must become self-sufficient, self-sustaining, and self-directed, I took that seriously. Even though I'm teaching it, I lived it for myself and said, yo, you know what we got to do? I got to train my family to, uh, to be hip hop, to be self-sufficient. And it was right around this time that I'm training my daughter to deal with merchandise and product management. I trained my eldest son, Chris, to be a DJ and get into sound. My uh, son, Isaac, youngest son, Isaac, youngest child, Isaac, was stage manager, running between all of us, basically, really assistant manager to his mother, Simone, who was booking all the concerts. So you got this family where the wife, the mother, I should say, is booking the concerts. The father is doing the concerts. The daughter is selling the merch. The son is the DJ. And the other son is going between all of us to make sure we all good. <laughs> this is what I have set up in my own family situation. Now, of course, my kids grew up in Disney, of course. Uh, fuck, that we don't want to go on tour. What we got to go on? La, 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 la. And then that opens it up to you guys for apprenticeship. Uh, because my kids don't want to do it. They're now 20, 24, 5. Uh, this was 30, going on 30, you know. So now they grew up in it. So now they're like, I'm not on I'm only going on tour when I really want to. Like if I'm going to, like when I was doing verses, everybody wanted to go to New York. You see, but these these other little, you know, when I do Ohio, like, oh, no, nah, you go ahead, dad, go ahead. <laughs> you know, nobody want to do these little, the Chicago little dates, you know. But I mentioned that to say that in this little line right here, you know, to be self-directed, self-contained, okay, to be independent as an activist. You may have to teach the people around you first before you go out in the street yelling with no organization and no backing. You may have to spend a year teaching people first how to fight, what the goal is, the importance of the goal, what we get when we get the goal. So teaching and activism is very important. Teaching and revolution is very important. If you don't have a teacher teaching the revolutionaries why the revolution is important, it's like you're talking to yourself and then you get the desperateness as well. You're not teaching people how to be independent. You're just telling them they should be. And so in this lesson, these are the beginning, these are the seeds of really being independent. As an activist trying to look for justice and peace, how do you do that with a nine to five? How do you do that? You got to report to school. How do you stay on your mission? Well, it doesn't start with the mission. It starts with your character. That's what it starts with. It starts with who you are inside and how you interpret your outside. Let's read on. So we're highlighting 15 and 16. 
In my observation, hip hop's preservation begins with peace and begins with peace and prosperity, leading to hip hop's independence. Hip hop must become self sufficient, self sustaining, and self directed. Living and supporting the very industry that we say is ripping us off is self destructive and hypocritical. We cannot ever expect to liberate hip hop from those who exploit its resources if we are dependent upon the same for our very survival. This is what, you know, I was going through, I'm not going to call names, but this is a whole bunch of people. I'm a hip hop, I'm the culture, but you working for Hot 97. I'm the hip hop, I'm the culture, but you in XM Saddle. I'm hip hop, I'm the culture, but you know, you 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 working with people who are clearly exploiting the culture, clearly exploit and you, and you exploiting the culture and you, and you're still working with them. And let me put this disclaimer on it. But that's what desperateness gets you when you got that mortgage to pay, when you got kids to feed, you shut your mouth and you take the, whatever is being offered for the service. And that's what we're dealing with. So again, I got to say it again. We know this and we appreciate that. We are set, we, what is it, emotionally sensitive? We are emotionally sensitive to those that got to pay the rent. We ain't fronting on that. But some of us don't have rent to pay. Some of us, like me, I'm homeless. I just have houses. <laughs> but me, me personally? I'm a homeless dude. I, I'm a homeless dude. That you know, I sleep anywhere, really. Why do I work? Well, so my wife can have something and my kids can have something. And so, but me, you don't see no jewels on me. You don't see well, actually, you know, I do have a little piece here. I do have my little joint. This is a jewel. No doubt. Uh that's about it. Uh, you gonna see on me. Oh no, 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 wait. I'm sorry, I'm lying. I got gazelles, y'all. What? I do keep a fresh pair of gazelles. I will say that. And I will consider that jewelry. I do consider that jewelry. It's eyewear. You know what I'm saying? So I will front. I ain't going to front on that. I will be down on that. But that's about it. Okay? Uh, that's about it. The bottom line is, you can't tempt me with nothing. What you going to give me? You can't. If you can't give me me, you, there's nothing you're going to give me. Because I love me. And me is at the top of what everything that I love and want. I already have what I want. I have me. <laughs> so nothing you're offering me makes any sense. And that was my attitude from day one. So I didn't get the big tours. I didn't get the the, the covers of the magazine. I never got a Grammy. I never won a Grammy. Who won't win a Tony. Shit, all of that. Okay. Never got all that. Okay. And I'm good with it. I'm not asking for that shit. I don't need none of that. Okay. I'm not even looking for that. But the point is, is that that's the point. The character. I'm not even looking for that. That's not even part of my whole thing, okay? Matter of fact, I wouldn't even, I'd be embarrassed if I got a Grammy, to be honest with you. I'd be embarrassed. Like, damn, my music is like, y'all like this? I'm doing something wrong. Let me go back and rewrite my album. Like, no. And that's my attitude. And I've said it publicly and openly. <laughs> so the people at the at Naris and them, they know my style straight up. They probably all fans, too. <laughs> they, people at Naris who judge the Grams, I'm quite sure they fans. So, they, so straight up. They know what it is, but they also know. KRS ain't about no Grammy. We look stupid giving him one. <laughs> right? We gonna look stupid giving him one, and he gonna look stupid getting one. Now, if you're if you're serious about your culture, about your movement, these are the lot. This is what you have to talk. This is the character you have to have. Okay. Give me hip hop. That's what makes me happy. Now, your money don't make me happy. I'm sorry. Uh, your jewels, none of that. I'm not even interested in that. Your sales awards. Oh, so I went platinum. So you gave me a sales award. Okay. Whatever. I'd prefer a young kid give me a lollipop and say, this is my award to you for your work. I will lick that lollipop as if it was <laughs> whatever, okay? This will be, the I, mean, I, I won't even open it. <laughs> I will keep the lollipop where it is and put it in a museum and behind a box of glass. Because that lollipop from a young person who says, I understand what you're saying and you're going to, I understand, and I'm lifted by what you're saying. Here's my lollipop. It's all I have. But it's the token of my appreciation. That's worth more to me than any, any award, any 
award alpha. And that's what I work for. Now I'm telling you this, not to grandize myself. I'll tell you something about me. I'm giving you a certain character. This is a character. This is what I'm trying to impart to you is culture, not just words, but look at how I'm acting. Look, look at my inflections. Look at how I'm coming at you right now. Fuck the world. <laughs> that. Okay. We don't need the world. We got. Don't ask them for shit. Don't ask them for shit. Don't ask them for nothing. They're not nothing. There's nothing you have I want. And that was the attitude of your ancestors, too. All of our ancestors. They said, we don't want nothing. Go ahead. So you go over there. We got everything we need. We self-contained, self-directed, self-employed. We independent. Now you want to come in my home now and throw me on the ground and talk about colonialism. See, now it's that. But if you just left things naturally, I don't need you. And I never did. So the hip-hop activist has to take that character. If you need from the people you protesting against, not only are you hypocritical, but you're going to lose your fight. You're going to lose your fight. So, so come on back here. Living and supporting the very industry that we say is ripping us off is self-destructive and hypocritical. We cannot ever expect to liberate hip-hop from those who exploit its resources if we are dependent upon the same for our very survival. And that's the key word, dependent. Dependent. That's, that's the word. It's not that if you work for XM Satellite, there's a problem. Or if you, you know, work for Hot 97, or for the Universal Hip Hop Museum even, or for anybody, that there's a problem. No, it's not. But if you become dependent upon the Universal Hip Hop, or Hot 97, or this one or that one, you, you can't move unless they move. You don't have unless they give you. Now, how you fighting that? How, how, how can you fight? You can't fight. The minute they take your resources, your whole organization crumbles. As simple as this may sound, this is the second. Uh, uh, um, this is the second uh, highlight, second paragraph, paragraph sixteen. As simple as this may sound, many are still helplessly dragged along in the world's currents and events because of their own attachment to the world's stimuli. After a while, they become unfamiliar and afraid of ideas and solutions that seem to go beyond the world's boundaries. They may posture, they may posture as if they possessed free minds, but in reality, their worldview revolves around what the powers that be or what some secret government agency or society won't let them do. In fact, the more they speak against the world, the more they become dependent upon it. Now, what I want to do here is uh, I want to read this part to you one more time. This part that says they may posture as if they possess. I think this is an error here where it says possessed. Uh, I think it's supposed to say possess. Read the sentence again. They may posture as if they possess free minds, but in reality, uh, but in reality, their worldview revolves around what the, what the powers that be or so on. Uh, and I'll, I'll read that, that again. So just, uh, uh, I want to circle possess and mark that an error. That's supposed to be possess. That's possess. Um, and if you really want to thug it out with me, there should be a comma after mine. In fact, you could even say a comma after minds and a comma after reality. The sentence is supposed to read, they may posture as if they possess free minds. But in reality, their worldview revolves around what the powers that be or what some secret government agency or society won't let them do. So there should be a comma between free minds, I'm sorry, after free minds, but in reality, and then another comma. So we're going to mark these as errors that we will fix in our second edition. Now, let me hit you with this one more time, because this is another major piece for understanding. 
as simple as this may sound, meaning living and supporting the very industry that you say is ripping you off, you know, you're living within it, but, but you're making money off the thing that you say is the problem. As simple as this may sound, many are still helplessly dragged along in the world's currents and events because of their own attachment to the world's stimuli, money, fame, I got to get ahead, competition. After a while, they become unfamiliar and afraid, unfamiliar and then afraid of ideas and solutions that seem to go beyond the world's boundary. They may posture as if they possess, <clears throat> excuse me, free minds, comma, but in reality, comma, their worldview revolves around what the powers that be or what some secret government agency or society won't let them do. In fact, the more they speak against the world, the more they become dependent upon it. Ironically, because the world does not belong to them, they become very insecure about their own affiliation with the world. The world is not right. We all slaves. They got us trapped. Many such activists feel that at any moment they can lose everything that sustains them and that they must work harder to maintain and hold on to the little bit that they believe they have. This life is lived in desperation and in no way can such a person ever be a truly committed revolutionary if you're living in desperation. Such a person creates enemies where there are none and poverty where none should exist. And while you may perceive that such a life is lived mainly by poor people, the truth of the matter is that I am talking more about the conduct and character of many working, employed people, and even some very rich and educated people. And watch that, you know, the rich are more, got more anxiety than poor people. They got more to lose. As I have observed, and notice, and we got to remember this when you're reading the activist. This is where you get the word observed. Observed. This is what I have seen. I'm not reading this anywhere. This is what has been seen over a 15 year period so far with this. Uh, 19, uh, paragraph 19. As I have observed, the act of desperation seems to transcend all classes of people, all races, all ethnicities, all genders, all faiths, everyone. As with insecurity, doubt, and fear, desperation knows no race or social class. Everyone is a potential candidate. Even the rich, even the employed, even the educated, even the activists. Everyone can become desperate, anxious, feeling like you don't have enough, feeling like they're coming after you, feeling like you're always going to lose if a challenge is in front of you. We never feel like we're going to win when there's a challenge in front of us. That's a slave's mentality. Let me just be the first one to let you know. It's a colonial thinking to think if you take a risk, you're going to lose. No, if you take a risk, you may win. And believe it or not, those who, they, they say risk favors the, the brave. You know, fortune favors the brave. Those who have courage. I know I may lose my life, but the other side of this is I may gain it. What you want to do. <laughs> so, so this idea we're, we're focusing here on is desperateness. If you desperate, if, if, if you dependent on some external thing to, to, to provide for you, it's going to be difficult to be a revolutionary. To be a revolutionary, to be an activist, to be a leader, you got to be independent. And that doesn't always mean you should be independent. Of course, as a principle, you should be independent. But what we also talking about here is like our institution, the Temple of Hip Hop, 
should be independent. That makes us independent. Imagine the day when we're able, when the temple of hip hop is rich enough and the word is rich, where we're flush with enough cash that we can pay our people. Well, we have a staff for whatever reason, and we can pay our staff through the temple of hip hop. Where we can pay our members, you know, to do services and work and things that we need to have done. And I mean, everything like, you know, temple members who are electricians can know that there's five buildings in in the United States that we're going to ask you, contract your company uh, to deal with. There's plumbers, there's painters. Hip hop is not just rapping. All of us got a job to do within hip hop and you should get paid for that job. And the temple of hip hop should have some kind of economic system where we're self-contained. We don't ask nobody for no grants and loans and help me and this, that, and the other. It's unnecessary for us, at least for us. It's unnecessary. If we enter into an agreement with somebody, it's mutual. It's like, yo, we could see why we coming together. Like, like to be real with you, I could see a taking a loan from the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. I know that that's like the last place people be like, hey, be taking whole countries. But when you really study that, you know, a lot of these countries didn't play the game right, too. A lot of these countries took the money and didn't help their people, too. Uh, a lot of these countries effed up the money when they got it, okay? When you really do the study, an IMF loan to get your country up? Nah, let let, let me have a discussion with you real quick. Let me have a discussion with you real quick because that's the level of sovereignty we're dealing with. They're not coming in to take your country. In fact, they're trying to build it up. Obviously, for their political agenda, they want you to be a democratic country. We want you to follow our rules. And then, uh, can you put the white Jesus on the wall too every once in a while? You know, like they, this is, they want you to follow their stuff. Okay. But you tell them, nah, you know what I'm saying? Jesus was an African. And y'all know that. So we're not going to do that. But on this other side, though, uh, we might we might not want to get rid of Christmas. Okay. We'll give you Christmas. Uh, we'll go ahead. But Thanksgiving, sorry, we're not doing that. Uh, we out of here. Uh, we may keep Halloween around because of the etymology of the word hollow and ween and all that. But, you know, but um, uh, Columbus Day, uh, sorry. <laughs> That's got to go. Uh, and this is how you negotiate. This, this, is how, this is how you negotiate. You give a little and then you take a little. You know, and this is what it is. I would love to have a, a discussion with the uh, International Monetary Fund on building a hip hop nation somewhere on this planet uh, and taking a loan uh, to build a grid and have a port and take in goods from the sea and all of that. Yeah, come on, y'all stop thinking like this. This is how we have to think about hip hop as a nation, as a real place that's doing real business in the world. And this is also how our children get protected, too, because once the world knows that our children come from a good place, they'll be treated like the place they come from. Okay, highlight uh, 15 and 16. Make sure that's highlight. Come on down to highlight 20 uh, uh, as well. Um, Let's start with with, uh, 20 as well. We're going through each one of these is important. You may want to put notes next to why these are important. We're talking about desperation uh, on um, um, uh, 15 and 16. We're talking about independence and desperate, being dependent upon the thing you're fighting against and the need for independence. Um, Now we're going to go down to 20. Let me hit you with this. This is why, as an activist, it is better to live a simple and content life than a life full of commitments and busyness. Know this. The rich are the most insecure individuals within any community because the base of their power is money, which is always temporary. Did you hear what I... This is why we are underlining this right now, okay? The rich are are the most insecure individuals within any community because the base of their power is money, which is always temporary. The activists 
who has built up large sums of money for herself is equally trapped by the business relationships that have created such riches. This form of activism is limited because of one's loyalty to other relationships. Oh, oh, oh um, uh, uh, it's 20 and 21, 20 and 21. We're highlighting 20 and 21. We're now in 21. This form of activism is limited because of one's loyalty to other relationships. Those who make their living from the same structure that everyone else is trying to rid themselves of cannot be expected to lead a revolutionary movement toward change. Their desperateness is shown in their attachment to worldly riches and corporate power. They can help, but they cannot lead. That's the important. The rich can always help us, but you can't leave because you're the what made you rich is your loyalty to business. So you can help out, no doubt, and we can respect your help, but you can't be the leader. You can't be the final word here. You, you cannot be that because your interest ain't here. Your interest is over there. So a so I, 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 I highlight 20 and 21, let's read on. Such individuals struggle as activists because to be an activist, one must discern between what is right and what is wrong for one's community beyond the benefits of those who may be exploiting the community's resources for corporate gain. You can't care about those who exploit the culture. You gotta care about the culture. To be a true hip hop activist, one must be self-directed with a minimum amount of corporate ties. That's the key. Minimum amount of corporate ties. Self-directed with a minimum amount of corporate ties. But if you make oh, your lips, I'm sorry, what is, what is self-directed? They leave that vague. Okay. That's why it's left vague. That's very perceptive. What does being so, so, son one is asking? What does being self-directed means? And that was specific, specifically left vague. The same way with um, um, this part, self-sufficient, self-sustaining, self-directed. We never explain what that is, though. And here's why. Uh, because it is vague. What's self-directed for me is not self-directed for you. What's, what's self, you know... Um, the direction yourself needs to go in might not be the direction myself needs to go in. And what makes you comfortable, um, you know, uh, what makes you content in life may not make me content. And I said, so we left it vague. We left it vague, self-direct. To be a true hip hop activist, one must be self-directed. Now that's pretty much common sense too, that you got to be able to direct yourself. <laughs> okay, you can't have nobody else telling you where to go and what to do. Now, come on. You, you, you got to have some direction of yourself. But it is vague. Because what exactly is that self-direction? And you got to come up with that. Uh, with a minimum amount of corporate ties. And notice the word minimum amount. Not no corporate ties. Just a minimum. Just know that the more you tie the knot with these people, the less you're going to be able to say and do, unless you're privileged, of course, uh, to be with a corporation that wants to hear that revolutionary talk. You know, and every once in a while that happens too. Revolution, you know, corporate, especially like a Black Lives Matter situation where you got corporations that you know ain't Black at all. Uh, but they want to support the cause. They feel like, this, you know, something needs to happen here. Uh, so they want to support the cause. Um, you got to have minimum ties. You know, support the cause. No doubt, I, we respect, sincerely respect that this is what you want to do. But but you can't have the final word here. If you're going to do for us, you're going to do for us. And we're going to do what we do. And and you, hopefully you researched us and you know what we're about and you know what it is. But we're going to do what we're going to do. And so just remember that. I'm, I'm trying to beat that lesson home for you right now because it's so important. You know, it's so important. And remember, when I was writing this and putting this together, I was just becoming this myself. I'm just learning. I'm just observing and seeing what's holding us all back. Why can't we just go do what we got to do? 
well, I got to go to work on Monday. <laughs> I was talking Malcolm all day on Saturday. Sunday, I was preaching Christ. Monday, Mr. Charlie. Tuesday, Miss Johnson. <laughs> Wednesday, Mr. Smith. Come on. I mean, you know, it's every day. So you got to ask yourself, you know, how free do I really want to be? And do I want to take the consequences of that freedom? I had to be homeless for a couple of years to realize my freedom. And I never, I never left the homeless uh, mentality. I love it. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I was going through it, of course, I didn't like it. Uh, I, didn't, I wanted to be a millionaire. I wanted to get out of here. Uh, but no, now that I've crossed that million threshold, and, and I'm on this other side now. It's like, nah, wait a minute. These dudes over here popping pills and shooting themselves. Wait a minute. Let me come over here. <laughs> okay. I remember when I had a little bit, I was happier. Now I got car note and house and some lawyer calling me because I got mortgage. And do you want to sell a house or you want to keep a what? Whoa. Hold up. I just want a glass of wine. That's all. That's it. I want to sit by the beach. And that's I don't want to hear. But that's you gotta be, you gotta want that. You gotta want that for yourself. Me, and I'll say this last part. For me and my family, I have a very ambitious family, starting with uh, my wife <laughs> right there. They don't know when to stop. Okay. They don't know when to stop. So my the father in me brings the stoppage to the family. And I say, we're going on a trip. We're all stopping. We're going to do this. We're, also, we're going to lock the door. We're not going out. You got to bring that to your family every once in a while, or they'll just keep running, 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 running. They run into a brick wall. Now you got to deal with that. Peace is so important to the development of any group. To be able to stop, to recognize your contentment, to recognize your victory. You know, to re recognize it. I won. Last week, we didn't have this. This week, we have this. Let's focus on what we have this week. But this desperateness, this constant, I got to get, I got to get, it, it, it's going to ruin, it, it, it's going to ruin everything. Uh, so, so, after 22, let me, hit, let, let, let me, um, yeah, yeah, let me, let me let me hit 23 again. Yeah, and, and this is this is this is each one of these paragraphs are jewels. You got to take them in. Take these jewels, wear them. But if you make your living in the same corporate structure that seeks to exploit the very community that you are seeking to preserve and develop, then discernment is almost impossible. The rules of business demand that you be liked by everyone and take no position on anything. Those who hold these views will not discern between right and wrong. They benefit either way, whether you're right or wrong. That don't matter. The business is what matters. Unless you are willing to be hated by those you love and or become impoverished by those who you have made rich, you shall in no way make any lasting change or enduring progress for your community. Revolution is not a popularity, a popularity contest. Successful activism is caused by one's sincere love and understanding of and for one's cause. You got to love and understand the cause. The dudes you helping ain't going to like you. Let's get that clear right up at the top. I've been through it myself. I ain't got to sit here and preach to you guys. From the time I started, there's been a large group that's been in support of me, no doubt. But there's another group that can't stand me as well. Uh, radio and video bans me. They can't stand me. Uh, that, that, that right there, they, they, you know, you know what it is, but you got to go in on the activism, knowing that, knowing that and know why they don't like you. So you don't get mad about it. It ain't no big deal. I know y'all can't like me. You can't look what I'm preaching and look what you doing. You can't like me. <laughs> okay. And so, so, so if you getting into this for a popularity contest, you can forget it. Okay, you can just forget it. Okay, and if the people you helping, if you waiting for them to praise you, you can forget it. Okay, not only are people not going to praise you, they're going to take your ideas and run with it. 
<laughs> okay, I give you no credit. But the point is, is that were you doing this for the credit or were you doing this for God? Were you doing this to be praised by the people or were you doing this to be praised by your ancestors? Are you on a mission or is the mission on you? Like it really, you know, I am the mission, which means I'm loyal to it. Or are you going to the mission? I, I'm the mission's over there and I'm over here and I'm going to it. You know, that's subjective objective piece. Are you subjective to the cause? Or are you objective to the cause? Do you have to get something out of the cause for you to be motivated? Or do you just do what you know is right and know that it's right? Do you just, do, can you just operate on what you know is right? Nobody got to give you nothing. Nobody got to hand you nothing. Nobody got to nothing. It's right. Let's just go do it because it's right. That's activism. Not what you get out of it. And this is, the, this, is, this is the piece right here, okay? If you want your friends to like you, I'm going to tell you right now, okay? It ain't going to work, okay? Those, um, uh, um, yep, here we go. Mm, yeah. Revolution is not a popularity contest. Successful activism is caused by one's sincere love and understanding of and for one's cause. In the business world, Cash and credit rule everything around us, not justice. And, and that's a play on uh, cream. Uh, uh, cash rules everything around me. Shout out the Method Man, the whole Wu Tang, um, and Killer Priest. I saw two of his soldiers roll up yesterday in Brooklyn. I didn't shout Killer Priest and 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 his the Wu Army. In the world of justice, balance, and common and common good, I'm, I'm sorry. In the world of justice, balance, and the common good, and, and the common good rule everything around us. Hold on, let me get that right. In the world of justice, balance, and the common good rule everything around us. I don't know what that means. Right. No, it's in the world of justice, balance, and common rule rules everything around. Right there, it is. Well, right. thank you for that. Uh, that looked confusing to me. <laughs> um, in the world of justice, balance and common good rule everything around us. This is the common good, right? Balance and the common good rules everything around us. Injustice, not injustice, but in justice, we don't just eat the fruits we find along the journey of life. Every now and then we look up to see where the fruits are coming from. This is balance and this is right. As a hip hop activist, do not be led by the rich or adopt the philosophy of self first. This is what makes a person desperate and insecure even with riches. They find themselves in the position of pleasing everyone and in doing so they please even the forces that work against the cause of their protest. For as long as your personality and reputation are based upon your financial status, you shall make your financial status the priority of your survival. And this is what leads to fear. It is an extreme act or thought of self-protection. Your impulse to preserve yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, politically, etc., causes you to become fearful. It is in the extreme concern for your own safety or interests that causes you to become afraid or insecure. Compulsive, compulsive attempts at one's own interests lead to fear and insecurity. However, once you free yourself by giving up the protection and guidance of yourself to God, you immediately inherit courage. Inherit courage. When, you surrender, when we surrender ourselves to that higher, deeper guidance, God's protective spirit or GPS. We rest in the mystery of our being, knowing that all things are working toward the fulfillment of our most comfortable and safe conditions. There's a higher level of activism here. Whereas fear may be the result of an extreme concern for oneself, courage may be the result of an extreme concern for others. 
Let me read that again. Whereas fear may be the result of an extreme concern for oneself, courage may be the result of an extreme concern for others. To lend oneself to something other than oneself requires courage. Help is a good example of courage. Teaching is another good example of courage. Self-sacrifice requires courage. Ridding oneself of desperateness, insecurity, worry, and fear are all exercises of the spirit and are essential to the success of any activist. You cannot buy your way out of insecurity and you cannot purchase courage. In fact, the notorious B.I.G., who was notorious for flashing huge sums, huge amounts of cash and living lavishly, warned us. He said, quote, more money, more problems, end quote. Let's just stop real quick and acknowledge B.I.G. It was all a dream. See, we all we, we all love to hear Biggie talk that gun talk, talk that gangster. But every once in a while, every once in a while, Biggie would come out with something profound. <laughs> Nobody heard that part. Nobody heard that part. And this is one of those parts, more money, more problems. You didn't hear that part. What you saw was the, the yacht. Remember they was on the yacht? Puffy was on the yacht. You saw the yacht. But he told you right here, more money, more problems. And in no way am I implying that money in and of itself is somehow not to be accumulated or used. Not at all. However, to not be happy or feel secure or to not feel motivated to purchase, uh, I'm sorry, to pursue change unless you are rich, or to feel that the accumulation of money and or property makes you more human than someone without such resources is simply not, in capital N-O-T, not the path of an attuned hip hop activist. Money must, never money must never use the activist. It is the activist who must learn how to, to efficiently use money. And, and that's just a given. Paragraph 33, hip hop's activists who, who have not secured a basic standard of living for themselves, independent of the world's institutions, are continuously distracted from activism by the influence of the world calling them back to work. The, a true hip hop activist cannot be addicted to the power of money, nor can money ever be the reason a true hip hop activist is motivated to move or act. Such an activist is moved by principles and virtues and lives a life as such. Biggie warned, more money, more problems. So why would any activist who has truly studied the events of hip hop's culture still want to pursue a life based upon the accumulation of money? Answer, addiction. Not to drugs or to sex, but to security. Here we go, y'all, listen. And not even in a bad or greedy way, but simply addicted to the security that money provides, believing that nothing can be done without a certain amount of money. Many see, many see no other light. Others believe in other, others believe in no other power. Some see no other light, and others believe in no other power other than money. They see no other way that they would rather live. Many hip hop activists are actually addicted to the belief that their actual security as a human being is connected to their worldly validation and accumulation of money. In truth, they have forgotten or simply don't know how to live without money or enjoy a life in spirit where you live within your means and people give you the things you need for free. Such a life is taught here within the overstandings of this instrument. Overstandings of, 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 uh, 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 wait a minute, um, um, wait a minute, this, this is something I want to say here too. I, I, I might have said this last week uh, as well. This is real. This is real because 
I'm living this every day. This is this is what I'm living, right? Let me let me hit you with it one more time. This is paragraph 36. In truth, they have forgotten or simply don't know how to live without money or enjoy a life in spirit where you live within your means and people give you the things you need for free. Now, this is how the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Because first of all, I get a lot of stuff for free. I even try to train temple members that walk with me when we go into clubs, we pay to get in. I never understood why people when, when a celebrity comes to the door, he gets in for free. This dude is rich. In fact, you should pay. He, if anybody should be paying to get in the club, it should be all the celebrities. But it's backwards. The person who worked all week and just got enough money for a drink and a, and a, a parking ticket and maybe to get in. That's who you're going to rate for every dime. And the celebrity walks in for free and you give him drinks for free. But here's how it works. Because when the celebrity walks in, you get 20 other dudes paying $100 each because the celebrity walked in. So the celebrity argues, if I don't walk in here, you don't get no money. So the club owner then is, behold it to the celebrity and so the celebrity bullies the club owner because that's what it is it, it makes no business sense okay even the business sense of the celebrity is in here so y'all need to come in here too now that don't make no sense your club ain't what they coming for they come in only for the celebrity that don't make business sense but these club owners they ain't smart themselves and i say that respectfully not every club owner you know knows what they doing uh, and so they look at the celebrity too. Yes. Walk through my club, I'll give you $5,000. How many times I've walked through clubs and they just throw money. They say, hey, I just want KRS to walk through my club and we'll give them 5000 10000 to walk through your club. Yeah, I just did a show. Yes, but if you come here, I can make 30 at the bar. That's the business model. But it's all on me. I'm the real value, though. The club is not. The, the bar is not. They need somebody to walk through. And so, and so I just want to stop here for a minute because I'm showing you the difference between desperateness, being desperate, and how you set yourself up to be independent. First and foremost, the way you set yourself up to be independent is to not be desperate. Do without. Learn how to live poor. Learn how to be a poor, righteous teacher. L learn how to live without money. That's how I did it. I ain't run for their cash. I was offered me and it wasn't easy, y'all. Let me say, I will say this right here, right now. Lord God, you know, it was not easy. Somebody come 50 grand for the show. Let's go. All you got to do is we only need you for 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 50 grand. Let's go. But um, we need you to stand in front of um, Yankee you, Yankee Doodle Dandy. OK, we need to stay. You got to stand in front of this. I'll be like, nah, we, we, we live like this all the time. People who know me, you heard the slogan over and over again. I'd rather make a peaceful three thousand dollars than a stressful 30. You offering me 30, but there's stress here. It the show's whack, it's unions and all of this, but I'm getting the 30, I'm getting the 50, but I'm stressed. I'm doing things I don't wanna do. They say, we give you $30,000 for a show, but you got to take a shot in your arm when you get there. <laughs> and you say, wait a minute. I ain't taking no shot in my arm to get. You don't get the money. Now you got to think about that. You got to sit there and think. And I know a lot of artists that had to think about this with the COVID. No, that's why I'm bringing it up. You know, you got to think about that. Do I want this 50 for this needle? 
How, how, how do I do this? So you got to be whatever on your principles. I'm not going. Now you take the consequences. You wasn't there. You ain't going. You wasn't part of the concert. You didn't get the 50, the 30, the 10, the 20, whatever it is. You just wasn't there. Why? Because I'm standing on my principle. Now, if you could live like this, if you could go, I mean, how many nights? I work for three Gs. How many nights? We go into a city and I'm working for 2,500 with platinum records. Okay. I'm working for 20, but why? Why am I working for 2500 Because it's the only little club in Sacramento where all of hip-hop gathers at. It's not about the money. This is the only place hip-hop gathers at. It's at this little spot right here, and all they can afford is $2,500, and it's packed. 500 people are in there, but the promoter, he'll tell you, look, nobody, we're spending $5 in, in California. Shout out to my people in Cali. They do what is called $5 party. Okay, Mexicans ain't got no goddamn money. They go over there, $5 parties all in the Mexican neighborhood. KRS, we the only ones. We show up for $5 parties. But why? Because the Mexican community congregates around this $5 party and a, and a, a, a Corona. <laughs> $5 and a Corona. And yo, who's going to give it to us? Me. I'm going to give it to you. Right there. Let's get this shit popping. And you do that. And it builds your, your community base. It builds your activism when you show up in these places. And it's not that you're not getting no money, but KRS is worth whatever. I mean, you know, I get $50,000 shows and these $100,000 shows. We get these from time to time. But that's not my work. I, I don't work for that. You know, I work for where hip hop is. Wherever hip hop is, you can guarantee you can put KRS there. <laughs> no doubt. I will be there. But this is the point. Other artists did not do this. And I'm not dissing. I'm just telling you the truth. They didn't do this. They wanted day 30. They wanted day 50. They wanted day 75,000 in a front of first class ticket. You know, that, that's what they wanted. You know, me, I broke bread with the promoter and said, yo, let's just split the door. I live up the block, yo. <laughs> I live up the block. I live right here, okay? All I got to do is come out my house and go right here to this little place called Whiskey A Go-Go on Sunset, <laughs> okay? We can work anything out. Let's go. We done rip Whiskey A Go-Go, rip a Roxy, rip House of Blues before they tore it down. And I'm talking about 10 times, like, not two, three. We done been all up and down these clubs, okay? In, out, up, down, guest appearance, no guest headline, you name it, okay? Because we only appear where hip-hop is. If you only appear where the money is, you're not where hip-hop is. you where the money is. But we showed up where hip-hop was, and sometimes hip-hop don't pay you. <laughs> and sometimes hip-hop don't pay you. But are you still there? And this is what it means that can you operate as hip hop without money? Without no money. I can't front. I'm in Capitol Grill in Jersey. I ordered up like $500 worth of food. It was just me and Simone. No, actually, I'm lying. It was me, Simone, and, and Tom and Isaac. We all lit. We done had the lobster out. We cutting the salmon, all type of wine. We're having a ball. Charged up like five hundred dollars for a meal at Capitol Grill. So he asked for the check, and oh, you know what happened? <laughs> There's no check. The waiter comes out and says, "There's some dude in here, paid for your whole meal and left." We sitting here now. We're embarrassed now. We look like refugees. Somebody paying for our food. <laughs> we in the cell. We in the now. Like oh shit! Somebody done saw us in the spot. Didn't even say nothing. Just paid for our food and left the restaurant. And we charged it up. We thought we were paying. <laughs> okay. 
whoever it was, just put the whole bill on his card or whatever it was, just put the whole thing on his card. And I said, now look at this. You know, this is beyond celebrity. This has to do with respect, first of all. It obviously was a level of respect. It is KRS was. So you got to season it with the celebrity too. But to pay a $500 meal for a dude, uh, that's a little much. And on top of that, to not even need no autograph, no picture, no nothing. Gone. This has also happened to me several times in my life. Several times, not the first time. I hit you with another one, Killer Mike. I'm at Papa Do's uh, in Atlanta. Papa Do's another seafood restaurant. They're not cheap either. We up in Papa Do's. Ordered up another 300. <laughs> I got the sangrias going. Okay. We ordered up 300. Killer Mike was there. He said, I'm, I got to pay for this. Put the whole meal on his car. I'm like, Mike, you feeding the teacher? Like, yo, what? He said, I got to do this. This has to happen. Pay for our whole meal. And this is hip hop within itself. And this is also how the teacher is treated within hip hop. I got my money to pay my food. But that's not what it's about. That's not what it's about. When you reach a certain level, the money don't matter. It's the respect that's now getting shuffled around. The money is just a, a symbol of the respect. Because everybody know, you sat down to pay for your own man. Like they saw me busted. I'm sitting there struggling, trying to figure. They saw me in the dishwasher. They say, what the fuck is Chris doing? And the fact they wash it, he paid for his food. Oh, man, let me help the brother out. No, it wasn't that. They knew what it was, but it ain't about that money. It wasn't about that. And to them, what's $300? What's $500? Yeah, oh, spend, that's it. When you reach that certain level of money, that money bracket, is do I respect this brother or not? Do I respect this sister or not? Is, is this somebody I want to associate with or not? That's what it becomes about. And that's the character of the activist. The activist has to have a character that garners respect. This is what gives you the ability to negotiate. Because you're garnering respect. You're garnering respect. Yesterday in Brooklyn, we threw on Sound of the Police. And before I threw it on, um, before we even got on stage, I said to Sun One, I'm only doing one verse of this record because I don't like doing Sound of the Police in open air. I, I'll do, you know, songs like Listen to My Nine, Sound of the Police, Black Cop, some of these other rhymes. And so I like to do in clubs, in closed doors. When I'm outside with people hanging out their windows and all of that type of stuff, I don't like doing songs like, you know, they say F the police in the public like this, okay? But I said, you know, it's Brooklyn. It's one of my hottest songs. Let's get one verse off, at least. Let's just do the first verse. You know what happened. Sound of the Police came on in Brooklyn. <laughs> We run New York, please, Michael. I turned my face. I looked to the crowd, looked to the left. I saw some big dude saying all the rhymes to the cops. Like he was rhyming the record to them. He wasn't looking at me. And that's how I saw him. He was a tall dude, so he was above the crowd. And he was faced sideways to me in the crowd, rhyming to the police that were over there who were also embarrassed. They cringing in a corner. I saw all of them. They was all over there, you know, cringing in the corner. Like, damn, we know he was going to do this racket. Let's just get through it. And as I went, so first verse went, crowd wilding, bucket. I said, damn. Son one had his hand on the thing when I pull it back. I said, oh, no. Give it to him. And we went through second and third verse. And it just got gully in there. And everybody was just like, right, this is what it is. And then when I got off the stage, of course, the police are right there. Like, yes, this is what it is. This is what it is. So the activist has to have 
respect across the board to be able to get the mission accomplished. Not you, not your grandizement and how people looking at you. No, but how people look at you is going to determine how you can negotiate whatever the goal is. If you're not respected, you can forget it, okay? And that's my point to bring it out. You got to have some respect, even from the opposition, even from those who you're criticizing, has to at least look at themselves and be like, well, damn, you know, the brother is right. Or damn, you know, we could do better here. Or wow, you know, something, something. But, but arguing just for the sake of argument doesn't get the activists. You can even see an injustice and know that it's an injustice. But if you ain't got no, if the person you're beefing with has no respect for you, then you can't negotiate. You're just going to have to fight now and physically, you know, protest against this person before or this corporation. Before you get there, though, before you get there, though, check yourself. Is your stance a respectable stance to be standing on? Does your, is your gripe, the community's gripe, not your gripe, you may agree with the community, but when you articulate the gripe, when you articulate the problem, you got to come from the community's perspective, not your own. That's what the activist is. You're putting you aside for a minute. And you're going to speak on behalf of the community right now. And here's the gripe. Here's what we're up against. Here's what we need. Let me voice it. Voice for the community, our aggravation, our cries, our wishes, our visions. Let me, let me voice this for the community right now. This is the beginning of activism. Before you go out in the street, before any of that, are you right? Are you right? That, that's, the, that's the key question. And when you become right, you notice that you ain't got to yell right. People come around you and start telling you what's right and start doing what's right because you are the right. And 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 that and that and again, it's not even you're the right. This is the community's right exemplified within you. So people see it. They say, right, we all agree that this is how we should be acting. We all agree that this is how we should be talking. So when you live within your means, you're really living according to the standards of your people. I ain't gonna front. We get money over here. <laughs> no doubt. But I never live my life above the means of those who I'm rapping for or teaching. I'll lose touch. I'll lose touch. It was almost like yesterday he was in Brooklyn. Again, Brooklyn again. All of these other artists that weren't from, from the neighborhood. And they was in, and, you know, I mentioned a whole bunch of names. It's like dope, dope dudes. But they wasn't from Bushwick. Brooklyn. <laughs> they were from all other Mob Deep, Queens Bridge, Havoc. And I mean, um, you know, all these people, man. I mean, maybe MOP, maybe um Lil Fame might have been the only one uh that actually was from the neighborhood, but uh the rest of the rest of the group uh was not from the neighborhood. You know, so here comes KRS. And I said to son, well, yo, throw that reggae on it. The because I was thinking about it, because I'm testing some new stuff too. So I'm like, yo, throw that reggae on. We in Brooklyn, throw it, just throw it on and let's see what it is. That shit said, brook, 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 do, 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 do. I was like, Brooklyn was like, okay, we understand. KRS is here right now. This is it. Okay, let's get it. Uh, everybody mood change. You saw Hunchback start coming up. Bobo Drake start busting shot. Everybody now. Now you understand. But all of that comes from the fact that when we was doing verses in Brooklyn, me and son one, we was roaming around Brooklyn. We had some filming and doing all this shit. So I went around the old neighborhood. Get some Aki and saltfish and talk to the hood. We met some crazies out there. Remember that dude? Yes. 
uh, some dude was out there wilding, okay? And we just, we talking to the hood. We in the hood, everybody's seeing us too. Bus drivers beeping, boom, boom. This, that, and the other. We getting food. Everybody don't know who we are either. <laughs> okay, we just out there like everybody else. But we taking it in. We learning what's going on. You know, this is what it is. And I used to live around here. So I got a little history around here. So when I get on stage at Bushwick, I'm yelling, Nostra Avenue, Clarendon Avenue, Utica Avenue, bringing them down to the I had the crowd screaming. Every, every, every line was where they lived. So it was like, it's like, but, but, but again, you're not going to get that if when you came, first of all, you flew into New York, <laughs> okay? You staying at the W, okay? You getting room service, you or whatever they got going on. You getting that, you staying at the restaurant. There was time to do the show, you go do the show. Now you on stage talking about, yo, Brooklyn, where you at? Nah, nah. You'll get a scream from all the other people who ain't really in Brooklyn either. But when the real Brooklynite steps up and starts talking about um, Golden Crust Caribbean Jamaican restaurant and start talking about Erasmus, I had these dudes on their knees yesterday when Erasmus High School right. and the Super Donut. I was I was my, I was freestyling and getting intricate with street corners. And if you turn here, you'll see the super donut. And you go up to Flatbush and you see Erasmus High School. And we was twisting these people, okay? But that doesn't happen if money's on your mind. If the Bugatti and the Maybach, if this is how you roll it up, there's no way you're gonna talk to your people. If you ate that day, hmm. You didn't eat what they ate. You can't talk to your people. If you're not hungry, even if you got money, you still should say as a rich person around your hood, like imagine, like I had a slice of pizza that day and I was hungry. I was telling everybody, I got to leave here. I'm trying to get out of here. Okay, I'm hungry. I'm going to get something to eat. And But that's the, that's the honorable way of moving a neighborhood along. You don't just say, look, man, I'm here to do a job and I'm trying to be in and out. And you know, this is what it is. No, and that's not what it was because most of the dudes that were there wanted to be there. It was a dope event uh, that actually went down. I guess I'm talking generally about shows in general. But this is this, I'm just giving you this piece because this is the culture piece. This is the activism piece that, that food, okay, good food, good drink, even a good smoke. This is your neighborhood. And if you can't relate in this way, you don't get related to. And then you can't really get the goal across. You can't even teach your people what the goal is because they don't respect you. And not don't respect you. Any artist, any celebrity can walk through Brooklyn and get respect if they see you on TV. <laughs> That's what it is. But for dudes to get out they car, for dudes to say, no, wait, 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 you have to stop. I'm like, dude, I'm on my way somewhere. Like, and they like, no, nah, boss, boss man, boss man. This is Brooklyn. Or are you up in the Bronx? Me now, bro, no, bro, hold up, bro. <laughs> like, hold up. They stopping you. Like, no, 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 wait. I don't believe this right now. I can't. And you're like, dude, I got to show the to. I'm running up the block. I got, no way, please. Oh, man. This is your neighborhood. And it's this that a lot of recording artists, they say, you know, they got security pushing people off. They had security. I caused a problem yesterday. Security wanted to whisk me to the van. I kept saying detour. <laughs> we kept saying detour. We running over to another 30 group of people begging, holding my albums up, got black books out ready for the tag. Shadoos is, you know, they coming at me. Like, no, nah, I'm coming at them. Let me hit you off. Big tags going up in the black books, hitting dudes. They got edutainment on vinyl out there. They out there with the cassette of Return of the Boom Bap, and Brooklyn came out. What am I supposed to do? Come with security, jump in a van, and leave? 
And we talking about activism? Hell, no, that's not what it is. I sat down with a young girl, about 11, 10 years old she had to be. Uh, 10 years old, she did a complete interview with me. You're probably going to see it at some point. Uh, she did a complete interview with me, and I, I blazed her right there. 10-year-old girl uh, coming up in the journalism world, and, and uh, she did a complete interview with me right after the show, and she got it. And her mother even said right there, she said, you don't even know what you just got. I said, she know. She know what she got. But she was 10. And I and KRS One, nobody got an interview. I brushed everybody off. Okay, these interviews, all these people, you know, these chat, these television channels. So they want the interview now. I brushed them all off. But this this young girl caught me right as I got off the stage. She like right there with a mic. I want an interview. I'm like, oh, it melted me right down to her level. So I saw a chair right there. I took the chair, sat down with her, another half hour right after the show. Jesus. What is it? Jazzy's world. Jazzy's world. Jazzy's world. Some younger is 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 she up? Well, she has. Um, it's called Jazzy's World TV. Uh, people can see her other interviews. Uh, she she ain't chopped the one we I did the other day I yet. So. Yeah, it ain't up yet. So it's called Jazzy's world. Jazzy's or Jazzy? Jazzy's. Or J A Z Z Y S. J A. Z Z Y S World. World TV. World TV. Jazzy's World TV. I did an interview for a young young lady right there. And she got the interview. It, 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 was, it, was, it was right there. But I mentioned all of this because this is activism. This is activism. Not so much the protests against something, but how do you mingle amongst your people? Can you teach them? Can you show them a new perspective? Can you make soldiers out of that? Right, and see that, and that's really what she did, especially with her. Uh, just let me add, because she went through Fifty Cent saying that you were his favorite rapper, right? And so that now to actually reach you to find out who his favorite rapper was, and then the research that I'm sure she's going to do throughout her uh growing up it's gonna be incredible she's probably gonna do something crazy she's 10 or right. something like this right. when she's 20. right it's gonna hit her in the head so hard that's right at 21 what went down 10 years earlier at a, at a rap concert that she started right. and 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 she did mention 50 cent mm -hmm. and look at that just as a side note too look at that so her introduction to KRS is 50 Cent. Swallow that for a minute. Her introduction to KRS is 50 Cent. Now, imagine if 50 wasn't 50. Imagine if 50 Cent came out conscious. And actually he did, but I can never say that. <laughs> but get rich or die. Um, a Get Rich or Die Trying was, to, for me, a conscious album. That that was hard. I know nobody heard. Everybody hears what they're, according to their consciousness. But the point is, is that what if 50 never became 50? And I, I mentioned also, I said to follow up, I said, look, it's humbling when people mention you like that. Um, and I mentioned Jay-Z at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And a bunch of people around there concurred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when Jay-Z said it, uh -huh, uh -huh. And it's like, it shows you the real culture. It shows you the real culture. It's not about who's commercial and who's underground or who's this or who's that. It's like, take a look at what's really going down. You may have your own opinion, but it was 50 Cent that she was listening to. Who's saying, who has a right to go, so... Have a baby by me, baby. Be a millionaire. Have a baby by me, baby. Be a millionaire. And all types of crazy shit, okay? Then 50 needs rhyming about. But this young girl equated him with the culture. Okay, first of all. And in his movie, he says, oh, actually, I'm sorry. It's not even a movie. Some, maybe in a, because uh, she said he said that KRS is his favorite rapper. Yeah, it's, uh, a, it's what I and they say one one of her. Oh, she interviewed 50 Cent. Yeah. Right. So she interviewed 50, and 50 told her 
Right. That even makes it worse for this chick. That's too. what I said. Wow. That's what, that's what that I even makes it, it worse for her, actually. No, she, uh, her she got straight from 50. Right. And but 50's always saying, I thought it was from the movie or something he might have said. Oh, uh, that's a whole different story there. Um, but 50's always he's that he's outspoken with that and just says, look, KRS is what it is. And he also says, you know, we hate this dude because it was Queens. And Queens, he's dissing us, and we love this motherfucker, and this is what it is. A weird situation. Havoc says tells the same story. Mom D tells the same story. We hate this motherfucker, but. We have to change. We have to go along with it. The bridge is over was what it was. Um, anyway, uh, nostalgia. So the point I'm bringing up here is, you first of all, you don't get to talk to your culture by flying over. You don't get to talk to your culture by being rich and in the back of a Maybach. And not that this is the Maybach. I wouldn't mind having one myself. But the, the image is... <laughs> The, the, the if this is how you're going to approach the community, you can't negotiate. That's that's the point. You can't negotiate. You don't have them. You don't have them in your heart. You can't teach. You can't try to change your mind. You can't create cadre soldiers. They can help, but they cannot lead. You can help, but you can't lead. You can help, but you can't lead. So in truth. They have forgotten or simply don't know how to live without money or enjoy a life in spirit where you live within your means and people give you the things you need for free. Such a life is taught here within the overstandings of this instrument. However, this life is crazy. <laughs> My lyrics is crazy. Chris is the pharaoh with bow and the arrow. We double the barrel, gorilla apparel. Such a life is taught here within the overseas. However, this life is crazy to those who rely upon the world's security over God's reality. Did you hear it? Rely on the world's security over God's reality. And this is not a judgment, simply a conclusion. In truth, such is not the fault of the money addicted. They were trained educated to believe that everything must be worked for and then paid for, that only the world's institutions offer real power and legitimacy, and that freedom is attained within a retirement that never comes. That's how they were told. They've been educated to believe there's no other way. I find, I find that this is how many great minds are trapped and turned to desperate acts just to survive, because they were taught this. Those who still live desperate lives based upon the accumulation of money are simply too preoccupied by their own survival and pleasures to really focus upon the well-being and development of others. Sure, most hip-hop activists can think and speak on hip-hop's music, culture, and politics, but find it difficult to really live and act, create and develop the same. Can I hit you with that one more time? Sure, most hip-hop activists can think and speak on hip hop's music, culture, and politics, but find it difficult to really live and act, create and develop the same. This, con this condition seems to be our only challenge as, as a hip hop community. In my time, we are simply too desperate as a people to achieve the goals that we say we desire for ourselves collectively. We are simply too dependent upon the world and its temporary security to overcome that same world for, last, for everlasting life. We are all simply looking out for ourselves, and this is why we cannot seem to protect each other. This is why we lack unity. This is why we lack unity. Not because we don't want to unify, but because we're too desperate to unify. We've got too many jobs, too many bills, too much happening, too much responsibilities to unify. As the great prophet Kwame Torre has taught us, the capitalist system will so confuse people that they will think they can think about, <laughs> come on, I see, here we go. See, this is Kwame now. We showed you a little bit of this earlier, uh, but this is him saying it in, a, in another uh, lecture. Uh, the, um, the capitalist system will so confuse people that they will think that they can think abstractly. 
They used to tell me in Latin, in Latin, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. But we know that this is not the truth because those of us who are sitting here know that there are many who are, but don't think. As a matter of fact, there is no way that one can think abstractly about anything. The only way that you can think about something is when you are involved in it. Because thought is nothing other than the reflection of fast action for the correction of future actions. Thought must be based upon action. Where there is no action, there can be no thought. If you have never taken physics, you cannot think about physics. Of course, you can think that you think about physics, but unless you think physics, you cannot think about physics. You may, while watching a baseball game, a basketball game on television, or at the game, criticize every basketball player, but unless you play basketball, uh, but unless you play basketball, you cannot think about basketball. If you are not involved in your people's struggle, you cannot think about your people's struggle. If you are not involved in the African revolution, you cannot think for the African revolution, think for it. The problem can be highlighted here in the past, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the problem can be highlighted here in the past between the white left and the African movement. It's we who have been, it's we who have been the action, who have, it's we who have the action. It's we who confront the police. It's we who have the sit-in movement. It's we who threw the bricks and bottles against the police. It is we who shed our blood, but it is the white left who comes to give us the ideology, this is absurd. And we need to repeat this for today. This is absurd just by what is going on in Azania, South Africa. In Azania, South Africa, the only people dying in the streets are us. It is from our actions that we get our thoughts. Nobody else will come from our actions to give us correct thoughts. Let me say that again. Nobody else will come from our actions to give us correct thoughts. That's a wild line. Thought is one of the weaknesses of the African revolution. Again, thought is one of the weaknesses <clears throat> of the African revolution. This is where those who say that they are our friends come and take advantage of us. The weakness of the African revolution, and this part is underlined, is that we have collective action, but we do not have collective thoughts. We have collective action as a people and serious collective action. We could rise up in a, we could rise up in the greatest imperialistic country in the world, America and we could burn down 270 cities in a weekend and then sit down for 30 years because we have no collective thought to continue the struggle. What he's talking about is when Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated in 68, 206, over 260 American cities went up in flames. It was the worst re revolt in American history when they killed Dr. King. Two, over 300 cities were on fire. You don't understand, this never happened again. Even with the Black Lives Matter movement, this never happened again. They don't want to keep showing it to you either. They don't want to keep talking about this. That when they killed Dr. King, all of America was on fire. And it wasn't just black folk out there either burning, tearing stuff up. When it comes to the hip hop community, with all of our awards and validations and money and property, as a community, we still cannot seem to protect our intellectual property from those who seek only to exploit our value as human beings simply because 
We are disorganized as a people today. Sure, we could talk eloquently about freedom, peace, love, unity, and having fun. We could talk about revolution. We can rally, we can march, we can write books and do lectures for a lifetime. But if we are still desperate, still disorganized, and still have not broken the chains of the world's security upon our flesh and minds, we are as crack cocaine addicts throwing crack cocaine against the wall of the crack house in an attempt to break free from our own addictions to crack. We must become and remain organized. And such organization comes from the loyalty and practice of our principles. As the prophet Kwame has said on many occasions, organize, organize, organize. The prophet has also taught us, quote, that the only way that we will, we will arrive at freedom is when the masses of our people are organized. We are a powerless people because the masses of our people are disorganized. Here's the underline. It's already underlined. Political power comes only from the organized masses. Political power comes only from the organized masses. Political power comes only from the organized masses. All of the problems we face everywhere, the problem of drugs is simply a reflection of the lack of organization in our community because we do not control anything in our community. Who comes in, who goes out, what comes in, what goes out, who comes in, uh, how it comes in, and for what reason. We control absolutely nothing because we are disorganized. We own, The only way that we will organize ourselves is when we ourselves come to organize ourselves. Oh, let me add here too, that I added this part with Kwame Torre, also this particular piece, because not only is this the activism piece, but this is what me and Kwame would sit around and talk about. Uh, and I thought this exemplified really who he was as a person overall was he was the organized dude. He was organized, 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 and teach how to be organized. Kwame Torre was all about teaching revolution. And I continue that tradition. You'll see it within the gospel of hip hop with continuing that tradition uh, right along. But when we were sitting around talking, drinking, acting crazy, uh, we was, uh, he was talking this, he was pushing this. And he was saying, yo, this is where hip hop has to go as a community, as a culture. Uh, this is what he was saying, really, this is where black people got to go. But when he's talking to me, he knew that we was building community and building culture. And this is what he would say. You got to be organized. You got to be self-sufficient. You can't be asking these people for something and expect them to be loyal to you and all of that. I took that from the elder and I took it seriously, straight up and down. So, so. So I just wanted to add that part. That exemplifies his character uh, just as a, as a man, as a person. Reading on, uh, uh, I'm on uh, page 540 and we're at uh, paragraph 50. This also means that money cannot be the sole reason that you are engaged in revolutionary change. Real change, not money, must be the goal. Those, that, those whose priorities are based upon the accumulation of money and or power will never be able to remain committed to any organized struggle toward freedom and or real change for long, any, any real change for, uh, for long. Uh, it is us who must desire freedom for ourselves and such a desire must come from within. It must be our true desire. Freedom must be the essence of our very being. But this is where the problem starts. You cannot free yourself from exploitation by becoming rich. You free yourself from exploitation by eliminating want, by developing your mind to exist outside of, of world security. This is a matter of principles and your loyalty to them. Now, we're going to uh, 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 highlight 52 and 53. Let's highlight 52 and 53, and you'll see why. 
You cannot free yourself from exploitation by becoming rich. You free yourself from exploitation by eliminating want, by developing your mind to exist outside of world security. This is a matter of, <coughs> excuse me, this is a matter of principles and your loyalty to them. The less you want, the fewer chances someone has of telling you how much you are worth, where to go, what to do, how to do it, and what time to do it. The less you need from the world and its agents for your survival and comfort, the happier you shall be. However, these are spiritual lessons. These ideas are based upon a principled life. Self-creation based upon one's independent principles is the key to life. And, and that's the piece right there. Self-creation based upon one's independent principles is the key to life. The word self-creation, this is the key. And you want to get this done quickly. You want to get this done at a young age too. Self-creation. Work on the creation of yourself. This is where you get the independence and the value to remain independent. Master a skill. If you master hip hop skills, you always remain independent. This is also why we teach nine elements and not five or four or, or so, on, or just teach breaking MC and graffiti or DJ. This is why we as a temple, we will of course recognize those, those, um, those schools of thought, but our school of thought is nine elements because this is the real life of hip hop. This is the life. And nine elements make you independent. If you can, you know, uh, master street entrepreneurialism, street knowledge, street language, street fashion alone, uh, you, you, you can live the culture. You can live the culture, actually. And then, of course, the artistic elements, you know, beatboxing. Uh, um, you know, graffiti art, uh, uh, DJ. I'm, I'm doing it backwards. Uh, uh, graffiti art, DJ, and MC, and then breaking. Um, you know, that's the artistic elements. That's the elements that are in demand all over the world. Master those, and you've eaten forever. It's really that simple. Be a dope MC. Put your stuff out. You're gonna eat. You're gonna eat. You're gonna find your way to your success. You're gonna travel. You're gonna tour. You're a DJ. You know what it is. B-boy, B-girl, you know what it is. Graph writer, you know. Master it, though. It has to be your total thing. And, and that's, that's what takes courage. Reading on. The hip-hop activist lives a principled life, a simple life. Not a poor life. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, not a poor life. Yes. The hip-hop activist lives a principled life. A simple life, not a poor life, but a simple and easy to manage life grounded upon one's principles. Activism on any level requires an already, uh, an already attained level of freedom and ease on the part of the activist. Here we go. A true activist has already overcome something or someone in opposition to the goal. Did you hear that? Let me say that again. A true activist has already overcome something or someone in opposition to the goal. And they bring such knowledge to the planning table for the collective good of all. Activists should have already attained that which they are preparing to lead their people to. A good and effective activist comes with a set of principles that she remains accountable to and others can hold her to. This builds trust. A true hip hop activist has already been to the destination discussed and back again, and can now explain to other potential activists the action and mind, and mind state that need to be taken to achieve the goal. Even if it is only worked out on paper, if the other activists can see where the plan goes and they have a firm view as to what is at stake and what is required, an actual movement for change can begin. The hip hop activists must have alternative sources of survival other than that of the world. Otherwise, it shall be very difficult for such an activist to overcome the traps as well as the checks and balances of oppression. Principles are indeed one 
one's alternative source of survival outside of the world's validations and, and securities. A true hip hop activist is not someone who has wo <laughs> woken up. <laughs> a true hip hop activist is not someone who has woken up one morning, fed up with the choices of her society and has decided to protest. A true hip hop activist has already tracked a clear path toward the goals which are being discussed by the group. The hip hop activist is led by her principles which should match the interests of the group. Now just stop here again for one minute. Notice the difference between a hip hop activist and every other kind of activist. Every other kind of activist can simply have an idea and lead you to it. The hip hop activist not only has to have the idea and possibly a written out blueprint, but the hip hop activist has already conquered the idea. And you say, how is that possible? We, we're trying to get to the idea. How does the hip hop activist has, has already conquered it? Well, this is the difference between being a hip hop activist and being just an activist. If you're just an activist, racism can continue in your life and you could protest against it. If you're a hip hop activist, you've already defeated the racism in your life. And now you can tell others how it's done. This is the difference. The hip hop activist activists must have an alternative. I'm reading this again. The hip hop activists must have alternative sources of survival other than that of the world. Otherwise, it shall be very difficult for such an activist to overcome the traps as well as the checks and balances of oppression. I don't have to explain that. You know what that's about. Have some other entrepreneurialism going on that makes you independent. Principles are indeed one's alternative source of survival outside of the world's validations and securities. And notice that principles are indeed one's alternative source of survival outside of the world's validations and securities. Imagine that principles are also a source, uh, a, a source of survival. Principles are a source of survival. A true hip hop activist is not someone who has woken up one morning fed up with the choices of her society and has decided to protest. A true hip hop activist has already tracked a clear path toward the goals which are being discussed by the group. The hip hop activist is led by her principles which should match the interests of the group. However, to think and act in this way, one must be motivated by forces beyond the physical world. To really live and work in this way, you will have to make one very important life-changing decision. You will have to decide once and for all whether you desire the world in its ways or the spirit, your principles, and its ways. And think about that. In my observation, in my observation, the true hip hop activist must have a divine connection in order to actually do the work of preserving hip hop and speaking out on behalf of hip hop's controversial issues in the world. In addition to tactical organization, the truly effective hip hop activist uses prayer, affirmation, visualization, meditation, chanting, fasting, poetry, dance, and other supernatural means to achieve the goal of preserving hip hop and protecting one's self against fear, insecurity, and, dep and depression that can develop later in life. Let's go ahead and highlight that, 59. Let me hit you with it again. I'm gonna read that one more time because this is very important. Any last sentences? It was 58, wait a minute, hold on, what, what, what? Last sentences. You will have to decide, why don't we underline 58 by request of the sun one, Let's underline that because that is important. That is indeed important. Let me hit you with it again. Last sentence of 58. You will have to decide once and for all whether you desire the world in its ways or the spirit, your principles, and its ways. Highlight, in my observation, the true hip hop activist must have a divine connection in order to actually do, and do is in capital D, capital O, do the work of preserving hip hop and speaking out on behalf of hip hop's controversial issues in the world. See, speaking out on hip hop's controversial issues in the world. 
to be able to speak up on behalf of hip hop and they're going to fire you the next day. Well, you're not even in that category. I can speak on behalf of hip hop. There's nobody firing me. There's nobody, you know, well, they may, um, what is it? Uh, 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 blacklist you or um, uh, cancel you uh, or, you know, whatever these words are and these terms are, none of that affects the man of God or woman of God. None of it uh, affects us. Uh, these people turn out to look stupid, uh, not us. The work continues because the work is not just us. The work is divine. That's the issue. Uh, have a divine connection in order to do the work. In addition, in addition to tactical organization, the truly effective hip hop activist uses, and here's the list, prayer, affirmation, visualization, meditation, chanting, fasting, poetry, dance, and other supernatural means to achieve the goal of preserving hip hop and protecting oneself against fear, insecurity, and depression that can develop later in life. The hip hop activist has no time to be distracted by the pressures, doubts, and temptations of the world. Through certain timeless spiritual practices, timeless spiritual principles, the hip hop activist operates outside of the world, in the spirit, the sp outside of the world, period. In the spirit, in the spirit, uh, the world and those who depend upon it are no match for the true hip hop activists that also operate spiritually. Today's hip hop activists must first pr pr protest against the addictions and temptations of her own mind before seeking to protest against unjust acts. For if she is not strong from within, the temptations of the world shall distract the activist and lead her astray. The true hip hop activist must know God. And notice the spelling on the God, that's you, the divine you. The true hip hop activist must feel God. You will not come to feel God through your physical senses and ordinary human form of forms of comprehension. Books alone won't do it. The oneness will be revealed to you in spirit after you have proven that you can be trusted. This is real. In other words, if lust, fear, and doubt still overwhelm your mind and override your physical senses, then you simply cannot be trusted. If you are still addicted to the illusions of the material world, then you cannot be trusted with the truth of the spirit, of the spirit realm. You can be loved, you can be taught, you can even be blessed, but you cannot be trusted. It's like trusting your own child with all of your belongings, knowing that he or she is addicted to crack cocaine. Adopting the divine performance as your personal character or any spiritual path that you can commit to shows your God that you can be trusted. Know this. The universe itself is an intelligence that will not reveal certain aspects of itself to you unless you prove that you can be trusted. Remember, the universe is alive and it responds to it responds to maturity. That should be highly, but I'm not going to do it. This is what it means to be of righteous character. It means that you can be trusted. No one will give you anything if you cannot be trusted with what you already with what you have already received. Let's go ahead and highlight that because it says this is what it means. And every time we deal with a what it means or this or that, we go ahead and highlight that. So go ahead and get um 64 and 65. And that's about trust. And it's not only it's also about not only about spiritual trust, but also uh um you know, this is doing this is speaking about spiritual trust, but once you have spiritual trust, you have the trust of your community as well. In the spirit realm, which is the cause of the physical realm, there is no separation of things. Everything is one thing, and everything is aware and conscious. 
We separate the true reality of people, places, and things so that we may understand that. But in truth, everything is really one thing. We learned this in the seventh overstanding. With your mind, you choose what you want for your you choose what you want for your physical world out of the spirit realm that you actually live within. Know this: the spirit realm is like a supermarket. Everything is there. But you decide upon what you need to survive based upon your own values, awareness, likes, dislikes, and wants. In fact, you decide upon what you want based upon the purpose for which you have entered the supermarket. Ask yourself now, what is my purpose? Your purpose is directly connected to the intent of the great oneness, God. Your purpose has a consciousness of its own that comes from a realm far deeper than your physical reality. Once you have found your purpose, you have also found the intention of the conscious universe for you. And this validates and empowers your activism. Your purpose, what the universe gave you to do, is what empowers your activism. In fact, when you know your purpose, you shall also know what already exists for you in the now reality of the spirit realm. And it is from the knowing that you plan your activism. It's from this knowing that you plan your activism, from the spirit realm. For it makes no sense to protest that which does not stand in your way. The hip hop activist is motivated to protest when some external force stops, stagnates, or in some way impedes the pursuit of that activist innate purpose or the collective freedom of the community. Any successful warrior will tell you to, quote, choose your battles. And this is what the hip hop activist must do as, as well. The hip hop activist is advised to join movements, rallies, and protests that are in harmony with her purpose. In this way, you enter the battle with supernatural assistance. You must limit your awareness of everything else to your purpose. Bring your purpose into existence by being only it. Don't, don't just do your purpose, be your purpose. Your purpose is your connection to the divine. It is your true self. And when one seeks to hinder your divine true self, divine protection, divine guidance, divine healing, etc., automatically comes to your aid. Therefore, you should decide things according to your purpose. You should protest according to your purpose. You should join organizations that are in, in alignment with your purpose. Yes, there are many conditions and circumstances to protest, but you will only be successful at your protest if, if the true intent of your protest matches the preservation and further development of your true life purpose. As a final thought, the hip hop activists must be organized. What does this mean? It means first that we must simply be superior to our opposition. Now we're gonna highlight this. Let me just finish reading it. We must assess, not asses. We must assess the strengths and weaknesses of our opponents and simply outdo them, outperform them, and outmaneuver them. We must simply we simply must be better than those who we go those we go up against. Stop. Now let's highlight this. I'm gonna hit you with it one more time because this is what people do not understand. And this is what this is what motivates me to be the best MC in the world. This is what does it right here. Okay, it's part of my protest. I don't just yell sound to the police. I say it the best. And this is a, this is this is this is the, this is the thing. You don't just say black cop. You gotta say it the best way. Everybody else saying saying it with the police too. Everybody else saying love's gonna get you. Everybody else saying MCs act like they don't know. Everybody, but who does it the best? Because that's hip hop too. And this is a piece of hip hop's culture that we got to take into consideration because again, this is how we're going to win the protest. This is how we win the protest by looking within our culture, by looking in what divinity has given us. 
which matches our purpose. So take a look at this. As a final thought, the hip hop activists must be organized. What does this mean? This is what, and look at this, this is what organized means. It's the first part of it, okay? It means first, first, that we must simply be superior to the opposition. So many people I see are complaining against people that they're not better than. That's why they can't overcome the oppression. You ain't better than the oppressor. I mean, think about that for a minute. I mean, think about that. You protested something that you yourself ain't better than. In fact, if you were better than what you were protesting against, it wouldn't bother you. You're better than it. It would disappear from your life because you're better than the situation. But most of the people protesting against injustice are just as unjust as what they're protesting against. They protest against police brutality, but then they're abusing their, their wives and children at home. You protest against you know, high gas prices, and then you a store owner jacking the price up on the consumer. You know, like the same justice you want is the same justice you're gonna have to give. So, so when you look at it, it says we must first, first we gotta be better than those we are protesting against. I know my hip hop mix is better than Hot 97. I'll challenge them to any duel, any time. My hip hop mix is better than all the radio stations in America. I don't just protest against the playlist that they play and calling it hip hop. My playlist is better than yours. My playlist will rock yours. <laughs> Straight up. Let my playlist play 24 hours a day on radio. Guarantee I have this. I'll have more ratings than you. I'll get more, more commercials than you. I'll be making more money than you with my playlist. And that's also why we're going to reinstate Hip Hopia Radio as well. We're just cooling off on it right now. It's not on our radar. We're not radio people. But at the end of the day, with a movement like this, you need your own radio station. You need your own newsletter. You know what you got to do. We know, you, we know what we got to do. Uh, we're still teaching our people, so we're not really on it like that. But we are going to reinstate Hip Hopia Radio. Uh, and we play everything, conscious, gangster, all of it. We play all of it it's, if it's good. <laughs> and who judges if it's good? The culture judges if it's good. We're playing the classics and we're playing the update stuff, all of that. But I guarantee you our 24-hour playlist, when we go back up, we're going to go back up with flame on us. So I say this to say that it's not just about complaining. And I use the radio as an example or video as an example. I believe my videos are better than what they playing on BET. That's what I think. Now the world decides on that. And I think they concur. First, we gotta be better than the opposition. We must assess the strength and weaknesses of our, of, of our opponents and simply outdo them. Here's the words, outdo them outperform them, outmaneuver them. We must simply be better than those we go up against or you're going to lose. You don't enter no battle inferior to the one you're going up against. No, when you enter the battle, you know you better. You know you better, and I'm going to show you. Second, we must really, uh -oh, we must be really willing to win our battles. Failure and or defeat cannot be an option. We must be specific with our challenges and honest about our own weaknesses and strengths. We must get, be, and remain prepared to win. Preparing to win don't mean looking at your strengths. Preparing to win means protecting your weaknesses. Covering up that hole over there. That crack in the, over there, that weak link over here, the traitor in your midst, hmm. the wild card in your midst. These things, you got to deal with that. 
Be prepared to win. Third, the hip hop activists must spend quality time with the hip hop community teaching the core principles, tactics, and beliefs of what we claim to collective, we claim we collectively want to, to collectively want. Let me read that again. The hip hop activists must spend quality time with the hip hop community teaching the core principles, tactics, and beliefs of what we claim to collectively want. You got to teach it. That's what we're doing here now. Everyone in our community must know and understand what's at stake and their role in the achievement of the goal. There must be one clear and concise goal that everyone understands and is capable of taking part in. We must know what success looks like. It looks like hip hopia. It looks like you sending your kid over the summer to hip hopia because they're gonna work, they got a work study. They're gonna get paid to study. They're gonna come to hip hopia. It's gonna be a place where you see hip hop boulevard, cool herc street, flash avenue. And you're gonna this see it. See it. See yourself walking down the street smoking weed with no cops harassing. Nas. See it. See a crimeless city. Imagine that. Could you imagine every year we come out and say, yo, the hip hop city had no crime. We the gangsters, right? <laughs> right? We the gangsters, all that. So if we decide there's no crime, there is none, right? So the hip hop city could be a crimeless city. We'll show all the cities how to be crimeless. This is what success looks like, at least for the temple of hip hop. It goes further than this um, with hip hop itself. But for us, let's establish our cities all over the country and all over the world where our children don't have to go to other venues to perform or our teachers don't have to teach outside of their culture. Their culture has temples for them to teach at. Our children have houses and temples and builders and places that they can perform at. They have their own clubs that they go to. They're within the culture. This is not hard to do. This is not, you know, incredible. And in fact, other cultures and communities have already done it. I've already done it. We late. Why? Because the teacher has to teach and the teaching is slow. It's slow. We got to teach. We got to keep reading our gospel every Sunday. It's not the teaching. It's not the teaching. It's slow. The learning is slow. Well, I'll take the burden on myself. The teaching is slow. Because if the student don't know nothing, it's the teacher's fault. So I'll take it under myself. I'll take it under myself. That hip hop is the way it is because of me. <laughs> I'm so evil and raw. <sighs> Oh, Chris, get off your ass and start teaching. And this is the problem now, isn't it? Okay. Hip hop does have other teachers, but nobody teaching. So we're doing our thing right here. I've been trying to do my thing, but you know, we just started reading the gospel of hip hop as of a year ago or some, some art part. Uh, so, you know, we started reading our gospel. We get to the end of our gospel and hopefully we'll have more hip hop teachers created out of this, this read right here. And hopefully I'm doing a good job. I'm hopefully you guys are getting this, you know, getting this. And, and you're realizing your potential and you're realizing who you are in the culture and you're realizing what the goal is. So, you know, what does success look like, you know, uh, toward the achievement of the goal? And you got to teach it. OK. Um, um, yeah, we, we must know what success looks like. Four, the hip hop activists must live and love hip hop. I, that seems simple, right? It seems like it seems like that's what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to love hip hop, hopefully. But no, dudes be activists all type. But we got to do this for hip hop. We got to do that. But but I'm over here. I, I don't love this. I love my kids. I don't love hip hop. I love my wife. I don't love hip hop. I don't know even know what you're talking about, how you can love hip hop. I don't even. That's fine. I totally understand what, what that person would be talking about. The problem is, is that they can't lead. 
You can't love, if you don't love hip hop, if you don't care about hip hop, if you don't appreciate hip hop with an emotion so deep that it's called love, you can't lead. Simply play, you can help. But if you don't love this, and I mean love it, like get hurt when people diss it. You know, I, I get hurt. When I turn on the TV and people be like, you know, hip hop ain't shit. I'll be like, oh, oh, let me come back. Yo, yes, we are. <laughs> you know, Ugh. but I, I, I hear people all the time dissing our culture outright, just straight dissing. And because of what they see on TV, because of how we projected it, this, that, and the other, and you know what it is. But it hurts. And if it don't hurt you, you can't leave. You, you're not motivated. If it don't hurt, when people talk bad about hip hop and diss our culture, and call us misogynist and we hate women, and that don't hurt you? You don't feel that? Like somebody talking about your brother, your mother, your father? Like, like you don't feel that? They say, yeah, it's bigger than hip hop. Big up to dead friends, though. Chill out. Shout out to my dudes. But it's bigger than hip hop. Hip. And we know what that means. But at the end of the day, what is bigger than hip hop? Nothing. Nothing. And that's literal, too, in the world. There's nothing bigger than hip hop culturally in the world. Like, literally. But on another level, though, you get the point. Uh, uh, if you don't love this, if you're not hurt when it's hurt, when you don't, if you don't cheer when it's cheering, the victory for hip hop is a victory for you. Not a victory for you is a victory for hip hop. Oh, because you got the new recording. This is gonna be great for hip hop. No, it ain't. Why? It's great for you. How is it great for hip hop if it's not great for hip hop? It has to be great for hip hop. And what are you doing to assure the greatness of hip hop, not yourself in it, but hip hop itself? That's that love for it. That's that love for it. I get mad when people diss hip hop. I get mad. I'll be writing rhymes against them. I be getting mad, I be like, yo, man, fuck you. <laughs> Let me get your ass. Uh, I get mad. Because no, you're not dissing me. You ain't dissing my culture. You ain't dissing my people. I know we got problems. We all screwed up. We know that. But you ain't dissing my people. So let's get it popping. You got to love this. So hit four again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Um, four. The hip hop activist, this, I'm reading this again. The hip hop activist must live and love hip hop. For if one's love for one's cause, uh, for it is one's love for one's cause that reveals extraordinary tactics and overwhelming energy. Those who are paid to fight will never defeat those who fight for what they love. Remember that. If there is no passion to one's fight, there will equally be no strength to one's fight. We must never be afraid to fight for that which we truly love. Again, the hip hop activist must live and love hip hop in order to be successful at her protest on behalf of hip hop. And finally, the hip hop activist must maintain the ability to recognize her victory. Most times a true activist will fight, 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 fight against some unjust condition for years, forming a protest habit which prevents that activist from seeing her own victory when it comes. Many times when you protest against an unjust condition, it eventually changes or you gain more insight into what that situation actually is. In any event, if you are not, in any event, if you are only seeking victory or revenge, you will not know when to stop fighting and protesting, even at even after you have succeeded in removing the injustice. Here you begin to fight against yourself and your own interests, even your own people. At some point, you will either have to accept 
it's at some point you will either have to accept that you are successful in your protest and move on or accept that you are unsuccessful in your protest and move on. Either way, at some point, the situation does change and the true activist must maintain her ability to recognize such changes and adjust her plans accordingly. The true hip hop activist does not protest for the sake of revenge or to look good or to defeat the opponent. The true hip hop activists protest unjust situations because such situations are unhealthy for everyone. The point is to bring awareness to the opposing party and recognize when the opposing party is making amends or has simply outgrown old ways. Let's go ahead and highlight that because that's very important as I hit you with it one more time. Let me hit you with that one more time. Let me hit you with that one more time. This is paragraph 83. The true hip hop activist does not protest for the sake of revenge. Do you understand that? And let me break this down, okay? Because people look at me with a scratch face when they say, when, 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 when I say, we shouldn't tear down Confederate monuments. People say, what? Chris, like, what? We shouldn't tear down. Of course, we must bring down the the, the monument. Uh, there's a racist on a horse or whatever um, on on a horse. There, we should tear down the monument. The first thing I say is, nope. I'm not really with that. I understand it. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. My intelligence is broad enough to understand why that racist is coming down. Uh, we do understand, but as a man of principle. I would not suggest that we pull the statue down. I would suggest that we change the plaque. Leave the statue up there. Don't destroy art. You are an artist. That's still a good looking piece. Some artists made that. That's where I'm coming from. Art. Not the politics of the art, but the art. But I'm not naive to say, oh, it's just art. Leave it up because it's just art. That's stupid. There's a racist on a horse that my kid got to keep looking at and praising. Nah. But we don't have to pull down the statue either. Let's just change the plaque. You change the plaque. This is so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. He was a devout racist. Owned slaves and abused them was all about white supremacy and all of the principles we do not stand for in the United States today. That's the plaque that should go up. Now when you go and read Latitude, you get the information. It's a racist. I think we should have statues of racists in our society. Controversial, isn't it? We should see the racists. You shouldn't hide that in a museum. Put the racist on display and make the plaque say he was a racist or whatever. Because not just racism, they got people up there with straight murderers. Just like, you know, forget racism. These people are killing people, diseasing people, genocide, robberies, rapes. Like, no, why don't we put that on the plaque? Keep the statue up there. Keep the Confederate flag flying. And say, yo, when you see the Confederate flag, that's the flag of the loser. I'm not dissing the Confederates at all. It's the flag of the loser. You lost the war. That's it. That's, as, that's about as far as it should go. All this, oh, he find the Confederate flag. He a racist. Nah, temple members can't think like that. And if you do, you should change your thought to that. Change your thought to that. The Confederate flag is not a racist flag. The American flag is a racist flag. <laughs> Did you get my last album? Did you? What was that on? Uh, 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 uh. Symbols of human injustice. American flag. Now hear this. Now hear this, right? Or, yeah. It was on Now Hear This. Go back and listen to American flag. It was on Now Hear This. When Swiss Beat shot to cover that. Um, uh, American flag on that. Go back and listen to that. You'll, you'll get an idea. No, no, the Confederate flag uh, did not just stand for slavement of Africans and racism. Don't let CNN tell you your history, okay? 
Do your own research. Pull the books out. Ask a confederate, yo, what's the deal, G? <laughs> what is it? Let him or her explain themselves to you. Don't watch TV and say, oh, they all racist and against black people. That's ignorance. It really is ignorance because you don't know. Black people flew the American flew the Confederate flag too. So did Native Americans too. Okay. This was an ideology. And don't think that the American flag didn't have slaves under it, even in 2022. <laughs> okay, they flying the, the American flag over your brothers and sisters locked up in prison for no reason. Okay, so I'm just spending some time here on this activism piece, on this activism piece here. The true hip hop activist does not protest for the sake of revenge. That's what we dealing with right now. Most of these people are just mad and angry at what they've learned of what these racists have done. But Dr. King tells us, don't drink from the cup of bitterness in our struggle. To, to receive justice, we cannot become like the people we protesting against. So the, so the racist on the horse, on that thing, he was a violent man. So what you going to do? Be violent against him? You're just like him then. Dr. King taught us, if you're going to protest, protest. But protest on the higher dignity of soul force over physical force. Now, I know I sound stupid to some people out there. I know I sound naive and maybe a little silly, but I'm about my principles and I'm about Dr. King and I'm about Malcolm X and Kwame Torre and Mega Evers and Marcus Garvey. Now, if you're not really about that, then ah, okay. That's you and you ride on with that and I respect that. But Malcolm, Marcus, Martin, Mega, <laughs> these are my real friends, my real ancestors. These are my real men. I sit down with their families. I do lectures with their children next to me. I don't have that make-believe revolutionary every Sunday you a revolutionary, Monday you back to Charlie. No, that's not KRS. KRS got to live this every day. And when KRS got to live this every day, you thinking about your revolution every day. So when you think about it, you're like, wait a minute. Are we, gonna, are we not supposed to be trying to make, are we supposed to be making unity, right? Peace, love, unity, and safely having fun. How does those principles apply to the racist now on the horse, on a statue? That's what you got to think about as an activist. I'm not here to tear down nobody's art. I'm not here to blow anything up, shoot at somebody, all of that. No, that's as an activist, that's not what we're about. There's another section of hip hop that's about that. But as an activist, a leader? No, the racist is up on the wall. Why don't we just change the plot? Leave the racist up. In fact, I like to put up more racists. <laughs> I think in every black neighborhood, there should be a racist on a horse there teaching you what these people look like, what their ideology was, and the flag they flew. And you will see it ain't Confederate, my G. <laughs> More racists are flying the American flag. Okay, the Klan. What am I talking about? <laughs> okay, what, a, what am I dealing with here? Okay, the Klan is, is flying the American flag. Okay, we got to be smart as hip hoppers. We got to outdo them, outmaneuver them, outsmart them, not join in on the ignorance and be just as ignorant as that. Be just as undignified as, as they. No, we're trying to make everybody come together and bring peace on this earth. So how do you bring peace on the earth? You got to recognize your Confederate brother. You got to recognize, I may not agree with you. I'm not your slave. I'll punch you in your face straight up. But no, I, but here's your view though. This is your view though. Let me hear your view. Let me hear your view. And, and, and let me hear what you're dealing with. You may get educated. You may sit down with one of these dudes and they be like, listen, blah, blah, and blah, blah. And you may go back and say, yo, you know, I never looked at it that way. 
Wow, that's interesting. We all are against violence. So once we put the violence aside, nobody's going to agree with the Klan on you hanging me. Okay, so we ain't agreeing on that. I'll put a bullet through you first. But this other, let's put the violence aside and just talk ideology. Why you feel that way? Why I feel this way? That's peace. Or at least it leads to peace. In fact, no, it is peace because you got to sit down. The two opposing views got to sit down and discuss their view. That's peace. You can only do that in peace. Now the love. Do you care about the other person? No, he's a confederate racist. If you can't love your enemies, how are you the Christ? Damn, did I say that? Yes, I did. If you can't love your enemies, how are you? No Christian should be talking nothing about no racism and no. Uh, no Christian should be out there pulling down no um, statues. No, I, I know I don't see no Christians out there. Now, Jews, y'all may have something there. Uh, yeah, the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You do me, I'm doing you. <laughs> that, you may win on that one, okay? But Christians, turn the other cheek. Love your enemies. Do good to those who harm you. Pray for those who persecute you. And the original word for persecution was enslavement. Oh, no. I know we're not talking about that. Oh, but maybe we are. Maybe these Christians, us Christians, if I may say so, are, are not serious about that Bible or about the, the Christ, the Lord and Savior, the character of the Lord and Savior. We ain't serious. We ain't serious. If you out there protesting against white racism, how are you the Christ? Here's the flip side. If you're not out there protesting against white racism, how are you to cry? No, it comes down to a certain character in the Christ, in the Mahdi, in the Buddha, in the Krishna, in the Brahma, really, in Vishnu. What's the character? Krishna is a man of knowledge. Brahma is about knowledge. The only way you're going to get knowledge is by hearing something you don't want to hear. That's how you get knowledge. If everything you hear you know, you ain't learning. You just, people telling you stuff that agree with what you already know. You know when you really learning is when somebody tells you something you do not agree with. <laughs> you like, no, wait, wait, wait. But they got facts and they got truth. See, that's how you, now you know you're learning. How you come to that conclusion based on this fact, based on this truth, these dates, this person? Matter of fact, let me give you the physical of it. Oh, wow. You might be on to something. You might, I might have to learn this. But if you're not interested in learning, you can forget about leading. Forget it. You're only revenge. You're, you're putting revenge forward. And that ain't leadership. That's just leading a bunch of people to their death. You just running up on revenge. He killed our brother. Let's just go. You know, I mean, there's a place for that. The um, is an emotional place for protests in that way. And like I said, I totally understand why the races get pulled down. I mean, if I put the philosophy aside for a minute, I'll be out there with a rope too. Ah, yeah, come on down. We don't need to look at you no more. But as a leader, nah, you got to now put childish things aside. That's what that is. It's childish and it's immature because you're operating on emotion. You're not thinking. If we think about it, we would just change the plot because what we want is the education. What we want is the knowledge. What we want is our children to understand what this evil is and how it's no longer in society. It's no longer in society. This guy was seen as a high figure back in the days, but today he's not. Put all that on the plaque. But to disrespect another artist's art brings you to that level. For you to disregard history and think that the American flag is somehow better than the Confederate flag, that's ignorance. You don't know that. Now you're out there with a mob, destroying stuff. We ain't about that. Temple of Hip Hop is not about that. We are about creation 
not destruction. And even when we discuss destruction, it's about creation, as you saw in the seventh overstand. So let's be clear with this activism. Those may not agree with me right now. Listen to me, man, I, I appreciate that. I understand that. You may not agree. You may not agree. You may say, nope, the Confederate has to still come down. <laughs> and I understand you. But you can't leave. <laughs> That's the problem. Or well, that will be your challenge. You will not be able to leave. Because to lead means you got to listen to the opposing view and figure out the consensus that's going to work for everybody. Not you, not them. Think the whole thing that works. For, matter of fact, let me continue. It got to work for everybody. Uh, matter of fact, yeah, yeah, let me, let me get it right. Four. The hip hop activists must love, must live and love hip hop. We went over that. You got to care about this. For it is one's love for one's cause that reveals extraordinary tactics and overwhelming energy. Matter of fact, I read that already. It, it, my eye just, just uh, was pointing to that. I'm actually down here. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm down here. But my eye just keeps pointing to this. It, it just keeps looking at it. You must love hip hop. Live and love hip hop. Come on, let's I highlight four. Let's highlight the fourth one. 78. Paragraph 78, paragraph 78, for it is one's love for one's cause that reveals extraordinary tactics and overwhelming energy. This is the truth. This is the truth. Those who are paid to fight will never defeat those who fight for what they love. Period. That's, that's, this is just what it is. Now, let me bring you over here, though. For when we, pro I'm, I'm, I'm on paragraph 84, page uh, five, uh, four, five, 446. Five. 546. For when we protest against unjust corporate practices, we should always remember. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I didn't read the whole thing. I'm sorry. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. For the true hip hop activist does not protest for the sake of revenge or to look good. Okay, for sake of revenge. We just dealt with revenge. An example, pulling down the statue. That's an act of revenge. Just change the plaque. Now, if the statue can't stand anymore, fine, pull it down. But as, as leaders, which is the difference, as teachers, just change the information. Okay, so we don't want revenge in our protest or to look good, which is what a lot of our hip hop summits were about. Dudes up there posturing and looking good. And yeah, hip hop should do it, lofty ideas. And then of course we go down to the work and nobody's there. We start asking for the money, nobody's pitching in. We start saying, yo, you gotta show up at this time. Nobody's showing up. We was left there by ourselves many times. The hole in the bag, as they say. Okay, we're going through this, or to look good or to defeat the opponent. We don't protest to defeat the opponent. Look at this, okay? The true hip hop activists protest unjust situations because such situations are unhealthy for everyone. That's it. Maybe sometimes we don't see it. Maybe sometimes it's corruption. Either way, your activism is the exposing of a problem that's worse for everybody, not just me. Not just me, not even just my group even. Yes, you could protest for something that's specific to your group. Yes, you can. But the hip hop activist is not really so concerned about hip hop group, like the group hip hop. We're fine. Really, it's the people around us that don't know nothing and live in their lives recklessly and carelessly. And we hip hop getting caught up in that. Hip hop itself would not present itself the way BET does. Nobody in hip hop does. Even the people on BET playing their videos, they would not present hip hop in the way the BET presents them. Imagine that. Okay? So, so realize what you're protesting for. Understand why you are protesting. Okay? The point is to bring awareness, the point, is to bring awareness to the opposing party and recognize when the opposing party is making amends 
or has simply outgrown old ways. You got to remember, you're going to teach somebody something. You're going to protest again, but now you got to give them a chance to get themselves together like we was doing XM, like we're doing XM Satellite before we start hammering on these people. We're giving them a chance that we told them what it is. We told them what it was. We, we, we're repeatedly going back. We're putting little hints out there. We're, record, we're going back to them. We're giving you a chance. Uh, uh, this is I recognize uh, opposing party make amends. Uh, simply outgrow no ways. Outgrow always. Some things we're protesting against was the way it was in the past. Just want to say that. And that goes back to the pulling down the Confederate statue. Don't apply today's morals and ethics to the past and say you're protesting, you know, some unjust thing. That That's always a confusion. The past is the past. Even our time, we, we understand what we're doing right now. We understand who we are and what we're doing right now. But the future may not. Like, imagine that. Somebody may put a statue up of KRS-One in Hippopia. OK, and then the tides change and they say, no, this guy, KRS-One, um, he threw PM Dawn off the stage or um, he, um, you know, I don't know, something else. Somebody may come up with something and say, nah, and we're going to pull him down. And so they pull down the KRS statue and say, no, this goes up in a museum somewhere. That would be ignorance. It would just be revenge. You heard something and you just revenge or or or. You heard something when I was 40. I did something at 40. But I outgrew it at, at 45. I had a new view at 45 and, and, and expressed it and told everybody, this is my new view. If I, I denounce this, a, a Stan Tukey Williams would be a better example. A Stan Tukey Williams, who, uh, leader of the Crips, um, you know, obviously committed murders, robberies, and every other kind of thing. Went into prison on death row. They were gonna, you know, he was on death row. They, they said, we got this dude. He's getting sentenced to death. There's so many people he killed and was part of. He was sentenced to death. In death row, he found an epiphany. He said this whole thing was crazy. It was all bullshit. He denounced the Crips, wrote a book denouncing the Crips, told kids, don't get involved with this. I'm the leader of the Crips itself. Don't get involved, Stan Tukey Williams. They killed him anyway. The governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, put the needle in his arm, uh, killed him. And even though he was also uh, nominated for or was up for a Nobel Peace Prize because his transformation was so succinct, he wrote his own book in prison. Uh, and his transformation was so crazy that he was going to get a Nobel Peace Prize for what he was influencing kids to do. And they were doing it. Young Crips, young Bloods, young essays were taking rag off and saying, nah, I get it now. I get it. Well, they killed him anyway. But the point of the matter is that, is that he outgrew all ways. And sometimes even though you give somebody a lesson in, in, in 91, they don't get it till 98. You can't be so quick to protest or diss somebody because they're not doing what you want them to do, or they're not preaching, they're not singing the song you want them to sing. So let's be mindful of that. You know, let's 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 really be mindful of that. Moving on, and, and we highlight we, we uh, highlight uh, eighty three, highlight uh, 70, 78 and eighty three. Here now, 84. We're coming to the close now. When we protest against unjust corporate practices, we should, all, we should always remember that we are in many ways protesting against real people with real families and real personal concerns of their own. We must always remember that even though we are protesting in injustice, we must not become unjust and insensitive ourselves. And the first cause of injustice the first cause of injustice is the inability to feel for the suffering of others. We must never become an ins we must never become as insensitive as those who we are protesting against. Remember, your enemy is also God's child. Many times our opposition is afraid and nervous, even trapped and truly sorry for their deeds. 
but they must now put on a front for their peers because we have challenged them publicly. You know how many times this has happened? Sometimes it is our own anger that makes a simple situation worse. Remember, it is our own loud voices that cause our opposition to get even louder and as a form of self-defense. I was going to say, um, going down with the statues, why the fuck that? Critical race theory. Might have messed up pulling down the statues, might have messed up critical race theory. Like where it's, you could have, you might have been able to get that through, but you already tore down a statue. You already that, destroyed they heritage. Right. And now they find a way to revenge. To revenge you. That. You pull right. And who's to say, we got to get an interview with somebody and ask that very question. Because what a coincidence. They, you tear down a statue, so they deny the, the, the this um, history in public schools. And you want to hear some evil? You want to hear something even further than this? They would be right because we tore down the statue. So if you tear down the statue, you don't want this history taught. Right. Right. You want it out of You want it out of society. And that's a what an argument that is. You want that you tear if you tear down the statue, you cannot argue for critical race theory. You can't argue for that. Or at least the opposition can say why argue for critical race theory if you're going to tear down the races? You really don't want to know. You just want to tear my heritage up. Or, or just keep hitting me. Or just keep beating me. Right. You just want to keep beating me for some shit I can't even change or probably had nothing to do with. You know, poor white folk. Y'all got to go through this bullshit. She's here. Uh, oh, the, the, the other one's here. All right, she'll wait. Um, my next appointment is here. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, we're just talking about morality, character, the activist, the character of the activist itself um, in that sense, and how we as a temple should be moving. We should be moving with revenge, and we shouldn't be moving in ignorance. We should be really trying to figure out what's going on and trying to cause peace between opposing views. Um if we approach our opposition with a resolution that works for everyone, most times we can solve some very difficult situations peacefully and swiftly and swiftly. The idea is to approach unjust conditions with just conditions. The idea is to replace evil, fear, and ignorance with righteousness, good, good faith, and understanding. Righteousness, good faith, and understanding. Replace, not destroy the evil. Replace it. Transform it. Mature the person. The purpose of our protest should be to fix the unjust situation, not seek revenge because of it. I got to underline that. I got to underline that. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, it's an underline. It's an underline. Let's underline from the idea is to replace evil, fear, and ignorance with righteousness, good faith, and understanding. The purpose of our protest should be to fix the unjust, fix the unjust situation, not seek revenge because of it. That is right. Be clear with that. It is not wise to approach evil, fear, and ignorance with even more evil, fear, and ignorance. The idea is to advance all parties away from evil, fear, and ignorance because evil, fear, and ignorance does not work for anybody. For it is a fact that those who commit acts of injustice are either trapped by their own unjust conditions or they are ignorant to the effects of their of their conditions. Either way, yelling, screaming, protesting, or threatening is like doing the same to a sick person in need of medical attention. Most people, uh, most people, most people would not yell and protest against a person who was generally depressed or had contracted a deadly disease, even if the sick sick person. Is totally disrespecting them. Most people would overlook the hostility of the sick person and seek to help the sick person get well. Using this example, we can see clearly that those who consciously, those who consciously 
commit acts of injustice are indeed sick to themselves. And if you dig a little deeper, you may find depression, loneliness, anxiety, stress, and or even ignorance and or basic immaturity at the center of the unjust person, the corporation or the uh, situation. And you look deeper, you're going to find some hurt going on in the situation, in the corporation or in the person. Therefore, our protest cannot be about simply achieving a victory that only satisfies our emotional or political hurt. Such victories are indeed temporary. Our protest must be about the upliftment of the entire situation we may find ourselves within, no matter how unjust the situation may be. Protesting against a liquor company or a cigarette company or an insurance company or an oil company while people still use these products daily is a waste of the activist's time. However, teaching people, including the employees of such companies, about the harmful effects of, such, of abusing such products is a lot more effective and useful than threatening the corporation itself. Seek the good in people and expect people to respond to good ideas that are beneficial to all. In his book, Why We Can't Wait, The King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., The King outlines the Ten Commandments of Nonviolent Activism. He writes, meditate daily on the teachings and life of Jesus. That was Dr. King. And that's what he was in his life. But if you dig deeper, the life and teachings of Jesus is the character of the Christ. And it is. The story's all screwed up. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. But the, but the basic of that story is still what it is. And, and, and the Temple of Hip Hop confirms that because we walk the path. So we've seen the light. We know the path. We walked the Jesus path. We walked it straight up. And it's a wonderful life, the Christian life. If you can achieve it, if you can walk that path, be real about your Bible. Dude, it's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. We're over here with the gospel. We over here with what God gave us. And it is a blessing. It is a blessing. Uh, uh, therefore, I'm just going to hit you with this again. Uh, well, well, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Meditate daily on the teachings and life of Jesus. That's not bad for a protest, for an athlete, even if you're Muslim, even if you're atheist, even if you uh, whatever, you know, Jewish, uh, Hindu, uh, Buddhist, whatever, Wiccan. Um, meditate on the life of Jesus. As, as activism, right, that's what we're reading this for. We're reading this for as activism, okay? Not the religious part, right, that's a good thing to say. You know, not the spiritual piece. Just Jesus was an activist, <laughs> okay? Remember that. He didn't sit on his ass while his people were being oppressed. Remember, this is the second one now, remember always that the nonviolent movement in Birmingham seeks justice and reconciliation. That's what we just talked about. You don't just fight to kill. You fight to get agreement, reconciliation. Let us both mature. Moving on, paragraph 96. Walk and talk. Walk and talk in the manner of love, for God is love. Walk and talk in love. And when I hear the word love, I, I think of love, the emotional bond of love. But I also think of care, especially when you come to activism. It's about care. That love means care. I, I'm, I care enough about this or you or it to love it. Pray daily to be used by God in order that all men might be free. Pray to ask God to use you for men to be free and, and when, you know, for people to be free. And you know why that is? Because when God's using you for the freedom, you're indestructible. Uh, 
sacrifice personal wishes in order that all men might be free. And we already went over that. If, if you have personal, and that's what the issue about being rich and having a lot of stuff. If you rich with a lot of stuff and a lot of connections, you know, you, you, you really, um, you can't sacrifice. Uh, you, you can't give up something for this. Uh, you got to also keep your mouth shut, especially if it interferes with, with your money. Sacrifice personal wishes in order that, uh, that all men might be free. Observe with both friend and foe the ordinary rules of courtesy. Just even when you're with enemies, be courteous. There's no reason for you to become as belligerent as they. It's going to be difficult, especially when disrespect is in your face. But these are the practices. You may not get it on the first one. Try to get it on the second one. Seek to perform regular service for others and for the world. Seek to perform regular. That's what we're doing right here. We seek to perform this service for the for first of all for hip hop, and then for whoever wants to listen or, or watch it. This, this is what it is. Refrain from the violence of fist, tongue, or heart. Violence of fist, tongue, and heart. That goes back to um, this part here. Uh, walk and talk in a manner of love for which God is love. This right here, refrain from violence of fist, tongue, or heart. That also talks with being courteous and so on. You know, even against your enemies. I mean, hip hop uh, in in our in MCing. Well, really, in in, right, yeah, yeah, in MCing, uh, we might have some problems with this one right here. Uh, refrain from violence of fist, tongue, and heart. Uh, we're violent with the tongue, uh, no doubt, but it's a sport. Uh, in, in, in that sense, but in activism, you're going to have to curb yourself. We understand what it is in MCN or in regular talk, but as an activist, you can't be like, man, fuck these people. You know, like you, you really got to be like, you know, you got to come up with a solution. You have, your articulation has to be right. You got to be willing to negotiate and negotiate doesn't mean motherfuck you. And, you know, it doesn't mean that. It starts off with, you know, how can we resolve this? Strive to be in good spiritual and bodily health. Very important. You can't protest if you're sick. You can't protest if your spirit ain't right. Uh, follow the directions of the movement and the captain on the demonstration. All movements have uh, instructions. People were trained to do those civil rights movements when Dr. King was coming up. They were training people how to take on the dog when he was coming, what to do when the police do this, what to say when the racist says that. Uh, they trained themselves. So they said, follow the directions of the movement. And that also means, you know, stay in line with the movement. That has a lot of uh, context, but what it meant was follow the follow the directions of the movement and the captain on the demonstration. That went directly to their training uh, during that time and the captain on the demonstration, whoever is the temple representative who is who is repping the temple at that time, your leadership, the, the people who you are teaching should be looking to your leadership and to your guidance. And you're looking here. And so you're led here by your principles and you're teaching these principles to your cadre, to your students, to your apprentice, uh, and you're teaching them this. Last paragraph. This is the character of a true hip hop activist. You can modernize the words of this text, but the spirit of what is being said here is timeless and relevant to all hip hop activists seeking justice in unjust situations. There it is. So next week now, we go further into uh, the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. And that's a wonderful read because uh, we're going to go into now the, the advice that we give. Uh, for us, we say, you know, we follow the H law, health, love, awareness, and wealth. That's the law of our temple, health, love, awareness, and wealth. Anything going against that is against the temple. Anything for that is for the temple. But here we go into our principles, 18 of them, which are like laws for us. Principles are like laws for those who to treat them like that. But these are the principles. This is how we live. And this is why we, this, this is what keeps us together. And again, 
These are the principles that I've been following ever since they, they've been in my consciousness, even before they were written. I was following these principles. And I'll tell you this, man, I'll tell you this. I'm coming up on, I'm coming up on my 57th birthday, August 20th. I'll be 57. Man, I'm living the time of my fucking life right now, okay? <laughs> I'm living a fucking life. This right here, and it's because of the gospel of hip hop. I'm, and I'm not trying to sell a book. I can't. Get out of print. Right. <laughs> I can't even sell this damn thing. Uh, but what I'm saying is that the principles that I'm teaching you here right now is what I've lived. And and again, I'm showing you culture. You know, you know, I'm not saying I'm not bright, you know, my life is all great. I'm not, I have my challenges, but but the uh the principles that I'm teaching you produce what you're seeing, produces what you're seeing. Me wanting to rep my culture makes me the best MC. Wanting to articulate what we are about to the world makes me the best MC. Uh, and why do I feel that way? Why do you say you even the best MC? Because I have to be, I'm the teacher. Love has to be the best. Peace gotta be the best. Understanding, charity, forgiveness, you know, these things got to be the best. You can't just say, yo, I'm down for peace. Now, spit a rhyme. Well, um, doki do and dangi dang. Nah, I get the fucking idea. I don't believe in peace because of you. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not going to seek love and understanding. Or no, I'm not going to seek knowledge because you sound ignorant. Damn, get this. And on the flip side, how many people did I influence? toward knowledge because of my performance. Yeah, I, I spit the dope rhyme, rock a crowd. And they say, well, what is his name? His name is Knowledge Reigning Supreme. Oh, that's what knowledge looks like, right? You got damn right. And try to come this way with some battle talk. I will, okay? So at the end of the day, this is why we are on top. Not for our grandizement. I'm a lowly, poor, righteous teacher, okay, and a public entity, okay. So I, I'm, not, I, no, we don't do this for ourselves. We do this for the glory of God, and we do this for the glory of God in hip hop as hip hop. That's why we do it. We're happy that the world knows of hip hop because of our work. You know that hip hop ain't rap music. Well, some still do, but those who are serious in our culture, you know that at least got to talk about breaking MC and graffiti art DJ. You at least know that. Uh, big up the Zulu Nation. But now people are realizing, no, this is my culture. This, this is my religion. This is my spiritual path, hip hop. And more government officials are getting involved as well. Like I just told you, I'm getting ready to go through a whole government extravaganza uh, over here in Boston. And they named the whole thing around my music. And, and imagine the songs. Look at this. That song, Health, Wealth, and, and Knowledge of Self. That wasn't a video. That wasn't even a single. That was nothing. It was an album cut. Now you got the mayor of Boston saying, this is what got her through. We're going to film the whole thing, so you'll see it for yourself. But at the end of the day, that concludes our reading on activism. Now, our teachings and study of activism continues next week. We're going to be uh, looking at the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace, the 14th Overstanding, uh, the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. Uh, we maybe even need to, uh, to show you some of them. Um, I don't know. We may not have the time but because we're running crazy. Uh, but I wanted to show you a little more of that UN piece, uh, a little more of what went on at the UN. I'll talk about it a little more as well. Maybe I'll bring Popmaster Fables through. Um, He's been hanging out with us uh, since we've been in New York. Ever since Hip Hop Appreciation Week, Fables been coming. He was in, in Brooklyn uh, the other day, uh, jumped on stage, did a, did a little popping, kind of thinking that he slid. He was with his girl and some family members. Uh, so, but he came out to Brooklyn as well. Maybe bring Fables through next week and, and have him join us on the call so we can hear a little more uh, even about his time at the UN because he repped Zulu Nation. I asked Bam to come. He couldn't come. He was out. Of, he was touring overseas. He sent Popmaster Fables to rep the whole Zulu Nation at uh, the UN. So uh, uh, we should grab uh, Fables and have him talk about, you know, how, how he even, you know, his, his speech, you know, and this kind of thing. 
Uh, we might do that next week. If not, we'll just talk about it and teach it. Uh, what's really going to be important is going over the principles, what the principles mean and why this happened, why this went down, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there you have it. Um, there you have it. Uh, obviously, I am KRS-One. This is the Temple of Hip Hop. Every Sunday, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in America, we get down just like this. I want to thank you all again for taking your time to learn with us. Thanks for learning. As we do this traditionally, I'm sign out, and I give Sun One the last word to recap on everything that we just spoke about. Thank you. I'm KRS-One. I'm out. I turn you over to Sun One now for our summary and our closing. Peace to the gods and goddesses. Yes, indeed. Hip hop is in full effect. You know what it is. Now, let me. Um, oh, uh, they're in the conference room. Oh, is that the, um, this trip Yeah. No, yes, it must be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so okay. Uh, okay. I'll run down after. Yeah. But, no doubt. Uh, and I wanted him, because uh, can he film it? Uh, Pascal. So, uh, Pascal? Uh, Bro, one thing or no? No, no, no. Of course he can film it. Uh, uh, of course he can. Okay. Of course he can. Uh, I was thinking of um, why, uh, but I guess he should. Just because. Just because. You're right. Just because. No doubt. Um, so, so good. Go down to the conference room. So, all right. Sorry, sorry for that. Um, but okay, let's let's get into this uh, a little bit. As I'm sure you guys heard, I had a lot of uh, commentary on the side um, because this is this is very very important. Because through reading this, you can see really what a prime answer to this really is or to what hip hop activism really is now activists as as you know they have their own certain way and as you saw um dr king laid out his thoughts of how nonviolent activism should be and in this 13th overstanding, you see how hip hop has its hip hop activism and how it should be. But so if, if you didn't get the clues within this um, overstand it, hopefully I can help clarify that just a little bit. Now I want you to ask yourself a question to start um are actually two questions obviously it's rhetorical uh, <laughs> because i can't hear you but um this is something that you want to think about and and seriously are you a culture keeper and keeper as in like housekeeper uh, just so that you could get a visual of well, what do you mean by culture keeper? You, you got it in your pocket or, or what's up? No, I'm talking about keeping, upkeep of the culture. Are you a culture keeper or are you just a culture beneficiary? And nothing's wrong um, with being either or. Many people reap the benefits of the existence of hip hop every day. Um, it just is what it is. Again, it is for uh, the entire earth. Uh, as this points out, our main uh, goal and objective is peace and justice for all, or freedom and justice for all, uh, to be a little more accurate. Um, this is, this is what we want, but you should really decide that which you are going to do because again, you don't want to waste your time because your purpose is at stake. If you're actually or, or trying to figure out your life's purpose, 
which I will remind you that technically you won't really know your life's purpose and really until it's almost over. So that's that's the conundrum <laughs> of, of trying to figure out your life's purpose. Uh, you'll see for sure what your life's purpose was when it's over. Um, and the reason why I say that specifically is because your God is moving you. And you can't you can't escape that or, or this is where this is where we go uh, deeper, really, uh, deeper and higher. <laughs> A high deepness. Um, that your 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 actual movements, there there's appointments you have to keep. Um, in the universe for this to operate and work the way God intends it to, the way the universe actually intends it to. Now, your feelings and emotions will pull you, push you, stop you, uh, and this, that, and the third, which will end up creating the specifics of your life, which then, in the end, you will see even, or, or whatever little things that end up being your purpose. Prime example, health, wealth, and knowledge of self. As teachers stated, um, it was an album cut. And that album cut, it's, it's purpose, or one of the purposes, I, I know it has, it's actually probably has a, over a million purposes, um, if even to put a number on it. But one of its purposes was to affect these people in Boston, or this mayor in Boston, specifically. Now I know it, it is dope. Or you should, you should, you should listen to the song, and if you get a chance, or I would even say read the lyrics first, and then go listen to the song. But to know, teacher had to be in a certain mood <laughs> to to put this these lyrics down. Uh, had to actually go to the studio, record it. Uh, get it mastered, this, that, and the third, listen to it, actually decide that it's actually even going on the album, get it on the album, release it, put it in its place on the album, and it finds its way to the mayor of Boston, who I'm sure was a young lady uh, at the time, and got this inspiration from it and all of the things that had to go into for that same thing i'm sure that's why a lot of you um are here especially those who are still here <laughs> at this uh exact second that no the that alignments have to happen in order every week technically uh for you to join us and to be a part of this so it's to recognize that. So what I couldn't get off of my mind um, as we read through this was the line, and, and teacher repeated it a couple times. It was on 573, uh, paragraph 36, the last um, sentence says, however, this life is crazy to those who rely upon the world's security over God's reality. So in dealing with the world, the world is going to confuse you. The world, is, the world technically blinds you to God's reality or the fact that God is reality and that reality is God. And it's so messed up because it's, it's, it's as simple and as plain as that, that God is reality. 
everything that's happening, I, kn I know you want to feel responsible. <laughs> I, I know you want to feel, I know you want some credit. Right. We didn't, we didn't say that. Uh, uh, again, or, or you guys heard it. I don't, I don't have to find that. Um, but no, I, I, I know. I know, I know. Everybody wants, everybody wants some credit. It's a natural, it's a, it's a human emotion. A human, uh, it satisfies uh, the nerves. I won't even say satisfies the soul, but I'll say it satisfies the nerves uh, to get credit. Because without getting the credit and feeling like you deserve credit, you get anxious. Uh, so such is how, <laughs> such is why I say nerves. But know that all of everybody's answer or, or this and this is this is or my my hip hop activism right now to try to assure you that everything is going to be okay because God is the reality. That's how it's going to be okay. No matter what happens, no matter what you lose, um, no matter what is happening, I know things are frustrating. Um, things are even heartbreaking. Um, in that sense, but to know that it really is God. And, 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 and this is where I would say, as, as teachers spoke, as when, when he said that the hip hop activist has, has to have already achieved <laughs> what, uh, he's protesting or, or, or bringing people to the protests for, and I'm paraphrasing obviously, but it's to know that God really is the answer, really. And I, 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 so messed up, because it's like, no, son, say it in a better way. <laughs> so that they really understand. Um, but and like right, everything that he's talking about, the world calling you back to work when you have no idea because of the fact of you keep answering that call or you keep following that way that you keep following the world, you'll never know how God is really doing or uh, how God can really keep you and, and keep you good, keep you content, keep you safe, uh, even keep you paid. <laughs> and keep, or, or make sure that you have what you need and, and your, your soul fulfilled. And that's what I know teacher has. I have it. And again, or like he said, he said, no, nah, everything, stuff happens. Stuff happens. Um, you get confused. It's, again, this, this kind of reminds me of back to or last week when I spoke about the enlightenment. That only lasts but a certain while. Or, or you need reminders that this is the case. Because you'll forget, even the strongest of us, um, Again, this is this is a practice. Teachers spoke about it. it's a practice. You gotta you gotta keep trying. You might not get it the first time. Try again. Perform, learn to perform patience with yourself. Be patient with your learning. And, and, and that's that's why I said the learning is slow. And I, I wouldn't put that on the teacher, but I also wouldn't necessarily put that on you. It's hard. When you've been so used, and, and again, you're taught from birth that this is the way. That if you don't, 
<laughs> we have I was uh, having a conversation earlier with teacher. Like, right? Is it? It's the feeling of without it or or without the security of the world, you're gonna die. Is how it makes you feel. It's like, wait a minute. What do you mean? Um, you're not gonna get a regular job. What do you mean you're not gonna have a boss? What? How? How are you gonna eat? How are you gonna keep the lights on? How? How? How are you gonna? How? And yet, if you really saw it, or how? How these answers? They they actually just show up. But there are ways. There are countless amounts of ways. Um, mirac things that look extremely miraculous to things that no, your mind is so clouded by anxiousness and fear that you can't remember you got some money stashed away <laughs> over here that you put and, and forgot about but all of a sudden it shows up at the right time that you need it i i, I experienced that this week this week crazy crazy i won't go into into everything but no damn near or, or no i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna go there but just know it's real. It's so real. But I live in existence in God's reality. And I'm happy all the time. Like some people don't like it. <laughs> and I, and, uh, um, and I, I, I really just don't know what to say to that. But and no, the, 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 the joy of knowing you're in God's reality and that God is is causing all these insane wonderful things in your life how could you not be how could you not be happy or excited or 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 just loving existence and now to me, the activism is to really share that with others, to know that you don't have to go out and protest um, things. If anything, you might just want to go out and go to the uh, protest to make sure that everybody's safe, and that everybody's protected or to just be there and make sure that everything stays right or you be with the level-headed mind that says, don't get so caught up in the argument. Worry about these people who are in open air <laughs> and, and anything could go down. Um, so this being the case, To be able to share with everyone that technically, if you got serious about God, and I'm closing, that really, if you got serious about God and 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 learning, experiencing God's reality, everything would change for you. Let me put the disclaimer on it. It would change for you. It's not necessarily going to change for everybody, and we we can work on that. Sure, we we can we can aid in that. Um. Again, some people want the freedom, uh, or or just to be on the bullshit. To still, or they they really they they don't want the police because. They don't want to be policed, <laughs> and not not because they don't, or uh, not because they uh, actually care about people dying. And actually, let me say, I'm so glad I got there. Um, happy birthday to our ancestor Brianna Taylor. Today is her birthday. Um, and in in the in the sense of God's reality, she is alive and well, and she's with us. Know that. Um. 
so yeah, uh, we lack, right, this is why we lack unity. It's it's the lack of unity in thoughts. What did Brother Kwame say? Oh, what did he say? He said it. <laughs> he said it. Uh, oh, he said it. Uh, we have collective action, but we do not have collective thoughts. And what is the thought? that we should all have collectively, that God is the reality. And we don't need to depend on the world or, or we should really be sovereign from those who operate in the quote unquote world. That's, that's, that's where our thought should be. And we should move toward that. We don't, the, the, the more, the more we ignore, the more we can't experience. You ignore God, you won't get God straight up and down. And God is, doesn't even ask for much. <laughs> God, God's like, no, love, love. Treat, treat, treat the rest of my creation right. That's what God wants. Stop, God, stop fighting. <laughs> stop bugging out. Stop trying to take advantage of each other. Stop robbing each other. Stop stealing. Stop fucking um, doing stupid stuff. That's what God wants. That's it. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's not, is that not what you want? Listen, all praise is due to God um, for this. And for the fact of those with the eyes who can see, with the ears that can hear. Um, teacher inspired <laughs> me to write this. Uh, fuck the world. Don't ask them for shit. Everything we get, we're going to work God for it. That's it. We don't need nobody. We don't. We don't need assistance outside of God. God is what we need. We 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 need God and those that God has put on this purpose and destined for this. That's all we need. We need God. And God is, as as you can see, already taking us through, just taking us through. It's. it's we got a whole gospel, a whole gospel, big gospel, too. Um, nah, keep it real, keep it real, keep it funky. This, this is, this is why. And, and, and right, and 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 the step on that. Um, what they really can't fuck with is our passion, or our love, or teachers' love, my love, our love, our care, our passion. That's why nobody's ever going to fuck with us. It's our passion. You cannot match the passion that we have for God. What? Hip hop. Sorry. It'll, 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 it'll always, uh, the energy is too much. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up and down. And so we continue to represent. Let me, let me just show this up real quick. Show this up real quick. Let me give a shout out uh, to Boom Bap Nation. Um, go to the era hip hop. They support our teacher. Uh, one of the few or two of the few platforms that actually genuinely support um, and do it up. Uh, hip Hop Junkies was at the joint uh, yesterday in Brooklyn. It was dope. Um, peace and much love to you all. I hope you have a wonderful week. Keep God on your mind. Uh, hip hop, keep hip hop on your mind. And again, try to actually do something. The teacher said this 
uh, what do you do in the day for hip hop? Try to actually do something. Um, like set set at least an hour, at least an hour. Get yourself serious, and that, that's that's why I asked I asked him to clarify self directed because again you you must be able to direct yourself to do, but ultimately it's God. And thus why you are God as coming from God and God's reality. You guys have a blessed uh, or favored week. Excuse me. Please have a favored week. God loves you. Uh, Hip hop loves you. Let's keep it moving. Next week. Yeah.